Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council meeting of December 15th, 2006. We are in John Farrow Council Chambers, room 340, uh, here in City Hall, and we meet here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., um, except for the first Friday of the month in which we meet down in Van Nuys City Hall in our effort to bring City Council close to all Angelinos. Um, just one note, we will not be meeting next Friday. Uh, we'll begin our uh, winter recess of two and a half weeks. We'll be back in session um, the second week of January. Um, but usually we are here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. We are beginning this meeting at 9 a.m. today because of the, the, the last Friday meeting of the year. We have many special presentations to present to the people of Los Angeles and um, wanted to welcome our viewers on Channel 35 where we are broadcast live each time we meet and rebroadcast in the evening. The Channel 35 is LA City View, which is viewed throughout the city's cable system. Um, and we also are available through our city's homepage. You can watch the proceedings of the council meeting um, at www.lacity.org, where there's live streaming video. And also there is a wealth of information about city departments and elected officials and uh, some of the city services that are available to improve the quality of your life. Lastly, we can also be listened to through uh, our audio program called Council Phone, in which you can call in and listen to the proceedings of the full council or any of the committee meetings, and that uh, number is 213-621-CITY, um, and you can dial in and listen to the proceedings that we have before us. We invite members of the public here to, be, uh, to give public testimony, um, just general public comment, or for items that are on our agenda in which uh, that we have not had a public hearing. You can get copies of our agenda also at our uh, homepage at lacity.org by clicking on the City Council link. Um, by showing up here in Council Chambers where we have Council Ambassadors to assist you in the back, local high school students who know their way around the uh, City Council and uh, the procedures of our meetings. Um, or you can stop by the City Clerk's Office and pick up um, an agenda. Uh, most agendas are available 72 hours in advance, um, with some items being posted 24 hours in, in advance according with uh, state law. Lastly, uh, folks live closer to Van Nuys, they can always give their public testimony or public comment uh, via remote from our Van Nuys Council Chambers, even when we are here downtown, and we're able to hear and listen to you, and the viewers of Channel 35 are able to listen as well. Um, we have a, a number of special presentations today, and I'd like to recognize for our first one, uh, Council uh, Member Wendy Gruel, our President Pro Tem from Council District 2, who I know has a special presentation and a tradition that we've had for many years here in City Hall. So, Ms. Gruel. Thank you very much, Mr. Garcetti. And I'm standing here because they're going to perform in, in back. And many of you know of ARC, uh, a wonderful uh, handbell choir and organization in the San Fernando Valley that has performed in this council chambers for many, many, many years. And uh, many of you know we adjourned in memory um, of Dixie Hendrickson, who um, had really founded this organization. She passed away in April of 2006. So this is the first time they have performed in the chambers without Dixie. Um, so so I know that we miss her uh, tremendously, but we do have Jane Sarcher, who is the executive director, Mary Shallert, who uh, founder as well, and staff. Um, and if we could ask everyone to sit down who's coming into the chambers, because uh, they are going to be performing in, in the back. Uh, so please uh, go ahead and begin. Got the green light. Okay, Bill's talking to them, so. <laughs>
Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. President. Um, and I just want to present a uh, proclamation to the um, Activities for Retarded Children Hand Bell Choir, also known as ARC, um, that has been here every, every year that I can uh, remember. Uh, do you remember how many years you've been coming? Here? Yes, City Hall. 15, 20? 15, 20 years that they have uh, been a, a staple of our kind of holiday uh, activities here in the City Council. And it's not only here that they perform, but all over the City of Los Angeles and the Valley and really uh, provide us an opportunity to uh, enjoy their music and to support a great organization like ARC. Um, and again, we're all missing Dixie this year. Um, yeah. But thank you so much and just wanted to present this proclamation to you thank and say you. thank you for gracing us this morning with your presence and music today. Thank you for having us. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. President. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Gruel, and thank you to our musicians. And continuing that theme, I'd like to next recognize Council District 6 for some more music. Actually, I have the honor and privilege of announcing the Los Angeles Lutheran Middle and Senior High School Choir as they're assembling right here under the leadership of the choir director Ken Bauer. Uh, as you can see this is quite a, quite a good number of young people in this choir. At this time I'd like my colleague Janice Hahn to say a few words as she's an alumni of this wonderful school. That's right. Well, I just wanted to welcome you all. I went to Lutheran High many, 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 <laughs> many, many. And many more. Years ago. So uh, it's my alma mater. If you sing the alma mater, I'll sing along with you. OK, cool. Welcome to City Hall. Today, what we're going to witness is some wonderful music. And after they conclude here in our beautiful council chambers, they're going to go to the rotunda and continue uh, as today they will kick off their sing-a-thon fundraiser and just we're not violating any rules. Nobody is going to pull out a little hat and toss money in there. This is something that they're doing on their own campus, the commitments they have there. So this is their opportunity to not only uh, fundraise for their school but bless us with wonderful, beautiful music. And at this time, uh, Ken Bauer is going to take over and uh, start the music.
once again, this is the Los Angeles Lutheran Middle and Senior High School Choir, and they'll be singing in our rotunda free of charge until 2 p.m. today uh, as they fulfill their commitment of their sing-a-thon. And I just wanted to point out that you come from a long line of beautiful voices, as I personally heard Janice Hahn sing a cappella, and she's very, very good. So uh, this is a tradition, I guess, that was started a long time ago. And uh, in addition to that, I just is, uh, I don't see my sister-in-law here, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you, uh, Christian uh, Cardenas, my nephew, he's the one that requested that we have this opportunity and because his uncle's a councilman, no, that's not the reason. Uh, the reason why you're here is because these are your chambers. This is your city hall. This is for you. This is your place. And you're gracing us with your presence by giving us this beautiful music in our chambers and in our rotunda for all the people to stop by and see. So please, all of the people in, in City Hall today, please come down and listen to this beautiful choir. They'll be in the rotunda where we have the Christmas tree in the rotunda and a lot of other mem remembrances of these beautiful, wonderful holidays. And you're going to make it as special as it ever was. Congratulations. The president, okay, we have time for one more. We have time for one more. Thank you. Okay, one more. Twenty-four. Our solos know what we're doing. Okay, here we go. Stephanie, you're here.
Thank you so much for the beautiful singing. And uh, for our next presentation, I'd like to recognize uh, Councilwoman Wendy Gruel again from Council District 2 uh, for our next presentation. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, um, and uh, what a, a beautiful day in, in Los Angeles to hear that wonderful music. And we get today to thank a very special individual, and uh, uh, Jan and I had the same idea. Jan did a beautiful proclamation as well, and we wanted to bring him into to City Council um, to honor James o Okasaki, uh, who has been here for more than 34 years. How's that possible, that more than 34 years of service uh, to the people of Los Angeles? He's worked uh, with the Department of Transportation since 1968. Um, I won't tell you how old I was then. Um, as a student engineer and returning to school for his master's degree um, in engineering at UCLA, and uh, which is where James and I actually met, was active um, both not only when I worked for the mayor, but in uh, UCLA government affairs programs um, and the Alumni Association. Um, and he went to uh, Washington, D.C. for a while, working as a consultant and returned to the Department of Transportation in 1976 and held various positions within the department. In, in uh, 1991 to 1998, he served as the Chief of Transit, starting the department's development and expansion of some of our first uh, family of transit services, including DASH, uh, Downtown DASH, Community DASH, and Commuter Express. He was also very involved, uh, which we got to work together as well, um, in the aftermath of the 1994 uh, Northridge earthquake. He also served as one year as a deputy mayor in the Reardon administration um, and acting as his staff for the MTA. Um, there's all kinds of things here talking about how wonderful uh, he is. Um, uh, he, in his plus 30 years, has not been a single regional rail project or bus project at the MTA um, or freeway improvements at Caltrans that he's not had a key role in coordinating, um, including Blue Line, Gold Line, Expo Line, Orange Line, you name it. Um, and I think that um, he has been really a, an invaluable service to um, Jan Perry and her district, and I'll let her talk about that. But uh, James is one of those people that uh, when I became Chair of Transportation, I was glad I was going to get to work with him. And he would really always tell me as it is, what he really thought, um, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you see all that? James never minces words, um, but has been a, a true dedicated employee of the City of Los Angeles and the Transportation Department. And I've always uh, appreciated um, his uh, insight, uh, involvement, and passion uh, for uh, addressing the issues of transportation. And you see here today so many of his fam family members and friends, uh, city family, transportation uh, staff that are here um, because he's had a great impact on the city of Los Angeles and we wanted to take this opportunity to thank him uh, for his uh, commitment to the city and what he's been able to, to give back and so with that I'd like to introduce my colleague Jan Perry to say a few words. Thank you, Ms. Gruel. And now, uh, uh, Wendy has shared with you the highlights of James' uh, career but if you look behind us the, the line to just stand here and support him or all the people who are in the aisle is quite long and it's just sort of a testament to who he is and, and, and Wendy's right, he is, James was always plain spoken and I can tell you <laughs> firsthand, uh, you know, when we would call and ask for help, of course, always at the last minute and, uh, you know, he always came through but he was always direct 
And uh, he's a neighborhood guy. He always took care of the needs of everybody's communities. Didn't matter what council district it was. He was always there for all of us because he knew how important our, our special events were, the trips for the constituents, and how significant and, and meaningful it was to them. So, you know, we really had a partner in James, a collaborator, and somebody who got it. And every year, ever since I was elected, I, I would participate in the uh, Nisei Week Parade, and I think I said this at your going away dinner, that I always knew that it was okay and we were coming on it because James was always at the end of the parade route uh -huh. waving us in and saying, okay, it's going very well, you did okay. And it was just always nice to see James out there. I mean, James was not only a stellar city employee with an incredible record, but he's deeply, deeply engaged and involved in community issues at all levels. And I'm just glad he's still going to be involved around uh, a friend. I guess you'll be on the parade route this year? Uh, yeah. Next year? <laughs> yes, okay. Sure. What you see here today is just a small piece of who James is. And I'm just proud to call him a friend. And uh, not only a friend within the context of our city family, but a friend within the greater community in the city of Los Angeles. And I want to say congratulations yes, and sure. to thank you and your wife and all the people who chose to be here with you today. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We have uh, Councilmember Rosendahl who'd like to ask, add his wishes, and Councilmember Reyes. Just want to say that uh, when I was a candidate for this office just a couple of years ago, uh, you took me down to the bottom of this great building, four stories below, and you flipped a switch, and I saw all these uh, traffic signals and situations, and you gave me my first education on transportation and explained to me the issues that were at stake. It was very helpful for me because the more I know about what I'm doing, the better off I can be. And then I was fortunate enough to become a member of this uh, august body, and your continued advice, suggestions, and support made a big difference to me. And I want to thank you for all your great contributions to our great city. And Godspeed with you. We're going to miss you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosendahl. Mr. Reyes. Thank you, Council President. I just want to rise and uh, First, thank your family for all their sacrifices and everything they've done to make sure that we can have as much time with you as possible. But also, in that particular time, there was always a double-edged sword with James. Uh, as they said, you don't always like what you hear, but the fact is, there was creative tension. I know at times, uh, I would wonder, are we reaching into his pocketbook? Or are we actually looking at the city resources? Because uh, you took care of our funds in a, in, a, in a manner in which showed your care and concern for the city. And like I said, sometimes I didn't always agree with you, but I'm glad we were able to have that type of interaction and usually ended up with a better product after much pain at times. But I'm glad we got there. But James, thank you so much. I know you came from a good place in your heart. I understand that uh, the tensions and the uh, the balance of power between council, the legislative, and the mayor and executive branch puts managers like yourselves at times in a precarious place. And how you manage to get through it, I really don't understand how you guys make it happen, but you do. And I want to thank you for that. And again, thank the staff, because you guys are the unsung heroes. When a project has to get done, a deadline has to be made, you're there at 1 in the morning, 5 in the morning, making it happen, haggard as you can be, but you make it happen. And for that, I want to thank you all for all the great work you do. So congratulations. Maybe it's okay to say to enjoy your golden years. And I'll probably be running into you at the Montebello Mall sometime. You take care. Mr. Labanche. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. And uh, I was reprimanded by my colleague, Ms. Hahn, because I was late. But... Uh, well, not a reprimand, but there was a question. But Mr. Okazaki will appreciate it because I was at a very needed intersection flipping a switch to turn on a new signal, which is only poetic for James Okazaki. And uh, I, th I thank you. But I think Ms. Gruel and Ms. Perry, and I love what Ms. Perry said, which is so true. I love city employees, and I love city employees who are very involved in Los Angeles life. And you certainly are, James, you and Linda and the work that you've done. And I remember you did a lot of pioneering things. Uh, and I see a lot of pioneers in the LA DOT all the way back there who helped that spirit of a can-do, a very creative department to try to keep LA moving safely. But I remember, too, your efforts 
on uh, the astronaut Ellison Algazaki. I want to say correct, excuse me for mispronouncing that, uh, and the naming of that square, which was your effort there, and uh, Judge John Iso, uh, who uh, Street, which was an effort uh, right old San Pedro Street, and you found that great history. Who was a Mr. Rosendahl? You'll like this. He was a student at Hollywood High School in the 30s, and he was the number one debater in the country and was uh, on his way to the Nationals, but when he found out he was Japanese-American, they took away the invitation for him to come. He then coached the number two person at Hollywood High to National Victory, who won. Lady, he was the first Japanese-American to be appointed to the bench. That's why the re designation uh, is there for that street. And tragically, he was uh, a victim of crime on Franklin Avenue at a gas station stick-up when they used to have stick-ups at gas stations. So it's an amazing circle of the world. But you got that recognition for the man. And I remember speaking of that recognition to Delbert Wong, who just passed, the first Chinese-American judge, uh, when we reflected a little bit. But as Jan said, you're involved with the community, you're involved with the department. Uh, stay strong. You are a very tough fullback. You know, you're able to hit the hard, hard, hard. I remember on the Transportation Committee when the former chair, now the mayor, was always, you know, making sure that things got done and you would be there and, 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 and doing the effort that is necessary uh, to speak uh, in the terms of what should be done. So I appreciate your work and all the work of the Los Angeles Department of Transportation to keep Los Angeles moving safely. But again, Wendy and Jan echo what Jan said about community, because there's nothing like Los Angeles City employees who get involved with Los Angeles. That is like uh, the true spirit of a public employee, and you're that, James Okazaki. Thank you, Madam Thank Members, you. Ms. Hahn and Ms. Gruel, and Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Labonge. Our next speaker is Mr. Zine. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, James, we wouldn't have an orange line without you. You got an orange tie on, so it reminds me of the orange line. I know that the work you did on that and all the other projects over the 30 years, I remember you when I was with the LAPD, the work you did for transportation to help people move about in the city of Los Angeles over 30 years, that pension, well deserved. But if it wasn't for those major projects you were involved in, they wouldn't have come out as good as they have for the people, especially in the San Fernando Valley where uh, Wendy and I represent the folks out there that always ask, when are we going to fix transportation? Clearly. You've done a lot with ATSAC and all the other projects that have been completed for the city of Los Angeles. So I want to congratulate you. And uh, while well, Eddie's shopping out in Montebello with you, <laughs> enjoy, those, enjoy those pension dollars. Uh, well deserved for all the work you've done. And the family, the friends that are with you, obviously a lot of support from the folks of the community and Department of Transportation. I wish you well in your retirement. Thank you. And, um We'll turn the, the podium to Ms. Gruel. There are, are two individuals we'd also like to have uh, speak briefly, uh, Commander Terry Hara and uh, our community activist, we all know, Brady Westwater. We See, I'm going to say wastewater again. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I, I do that to him all the time. <laughs> oh, good morning. And um, aside from uh, James's uh, dedicated years of service of, with the city, I just want to emphasize that that he has put countless hours, many hours, obviously, in, into the community. Uh, as an example, that was mentioned by Councilwoman Jan Perry with the Nisei Week uh, Japanese Festival for over 20 years and also serving as president for two years uh, with the foundation there. And he also supports many organizations, both in the Little Tokyo Chinatown community, uh, the Go For Broke National Foundation, the Japanese American Culture and Community Center, uh, the Japanese American National Museum, but more importantly, he's out there, uh, separate from his work, volunteering his time, getting his hands dirty, whether it's setting up for, for community events and taking it down, and that's dedication. And, and certainly with his retirement, uh, is another phase in his, his life that we welcome him and we'll see him more out there, even more in the community, serving the city as he did here uh, for 34 years, but also continue to give back within the community. So my congratulations to you, James, on such a wonderful year and, uh, you. and your commitment to the community. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. I'm, I'm here to honor James, both a personal friend and as one of the true friends of the Neighborhood Council movement. 
Whenever something was happening in our area, we did not have to find out it from anybody but James. James would always proactively call us, hey, there's an issue. You guys need to know about it. Come to my office. I'm going to show you what's going on. So rather than us finding out six months after something happens, we would always find out six months before something happened. And many uh, problems that could have happened were able to be solved before the problem even became apparent because James was there looking out for the community and he would call the community to let the community what was going on. This is a very rare thing to find in a public servant and we greatly miss James. Because of that, I have two announcements to make. Uh -oh. the, <laughs> the first is our Public Works and Transportation Committee recommended to the board which will vote next month to make James the recipient of the first Public Servant of the Year Award that the Downtown Neighborhood Council will be giving. Secondly, the Los Angeles Council of Neighborhood Congresses has voted to make him co-chair of our Transportation Committee. So from now on, James is going to be able to give all his expertise, all his years of knowledge to all the neighborhood councils of the City of Los Angeles and work with us in working with the city and developing a better transportation system. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of my colleague, Jan Perry, and, and myself and all of you, um, we want to uh, recognize and present uh, James with a commendation. And again, as we've all said, it, this was more than just a job to him. Um, this was his life and that he is still going to be very active. I saw him this last weekend at an event. We know he's going to be everywhere uh, telling us like it is, letting us know what we can do to to get Los Angeles moving again and James we just are so glad that we could be able to recognize you today um, in front of the council but most importantly in front of all of your friends um, and colleagues who are here to support you so congratulations and Jan it's a heavy one uh, wow look at that I know you've been waiting to talk. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a long ways from uh, a little town with only 600 people uh, in Japan to a city of uh, almost 4 million, uh, the second largest city in, uh, in the United States. Uh, it's been uh, quite a, a venture for me, leaving Japan as a little boy and, and retiring here uh, as an assistant general manager of, a, of a, a dynamic organization uh, in Los Angeles and uh, to be in the epicenter today of decision making uh, in Los Angeles. I really appreciate the, uh, the kind words that some of you in the council and my friends and people in the community have uh, spoken of. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to have uh, been the city of LA's representative on all of the, uh, the major transportation projects in this region. I mean, it's been wonderful, totally exciting to be in the forefront of bringing back transit. Although I worked 34 years for the Department of Transportation, and a lot of people think of Transportation Department as the old traffic department that just moved cars, I want you to know I spent 20 years moving people, okay? <laughs> I, I worked on every single rail and busway project. And the fact that we put ASTAC in the city streets of LA, which is a traffic signal system to move cars, it also moved buses. And who rides buses? People. So we moved people, okay? We also built bikeways. You know that where the dentists go, that uh, 14 miles of the orange line has also 14 miles of a bike lane and also a jogging trail. And we did streetscape projects. And, and as, it was, uh, we ha as, as you heard from Wendy, we, we developed a uh, wonderful transit program in Los Angeles. We are the second largest transit agency in LA County, the largest municipal operator in LA, LA County, carrying 35 million people annually, okay? And we're the 50th, 50, 50th largest in the country. We started because of Prop A and Prop C, which is what people wanted to use money for, to move people in transit. So that's what we've done. So, and yeah, we thank uh, Janice's dad, 
and also Mayor Bradley, those two were instrumental in bringing both Prop A and Prop C that has given us the opportunity to provide the quality of life and alternative also to uh, driving a single locking vehicle to clean the air to reduce congestion. Uh, and it has been an exciting road. Uh, but I wanted to say that uh, uh, I would not be here if it wasn't for the people of uh, uh, the Department of Transportation who let me be their uh, assistant general manager, let me lead them in the direction where the city council and the mayor want us to go in developing uh, a, uh, a city uh, of the 21st century, a balanced transportation system. And I think we're there. We are getting better at it. Uh, you know, MTA recently won the the, the best transit agency in the country. And, we're, and I think uh, Los Angeles Department of Transportation, right next to them, we have a, a wonderful accessible and clean fuel uh, transit system here in Los Angeles. To be totally proud of, you, you, council members, you should be very proud of your transit program. I mean, you don't hear much about it maybe across the country, but you know your neighborhood knows that we provide a wonderful service. You know, the, our dashes have names of your communities, and all of our brochures have names of your council, your council names on there. The community is very appreciative of the service that the department provides on your behalf. And I'm very proud to have led this organization to make the department uh, one of the nation's best transit agency. Uh, once again, uh, I'm very, very uh, thankful for the, uh, for the recognition, uh, for the honor that I've gotten today. Uh, and I'm just hoping that uh, you, all of you will continue uh, in that vein to, uh, to support, to value, to respect and honor all the city employees. I know that at least I counted eight of the 15 of the council members actually have had you know, experience working in council offices and our departments. Uh, and uh, uh, I, th I think that's a wonderful thing. And so I think uh, we want to continue to value city employees. And I want to thank you very much. And before I forget, uh, I also want to thank my wife, right there. <laughs> who's here. Thank you. Uh, her name is Linda Wa, and she's also a city employee. And my father is here, uh, Takashi Okazaki, my sisters, my daughter, my daughter Irene, my sons uh, Ricky and Mark are here, my good friends, all my good friends and my business associates, as well as my uh, associates from the Department of Transportation and other agencies are all here. And I really, really appreciate their support and their love in being here today to support me to tell you all of you and the people on Channel 35 that, you know, that they appreciate, <laughs> they, they appreciate uh, uh, my being recognized. And I, I, I really am grateful and spent a wonderful 34 years serving all of you. Thank you very much. And thank you so much, Mr. Okazaki. Thank you for your extraordinary service. We are very blessed to have had you here in the city. And thank you to all his friends and supporters who are here today. Um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Cardinus Grohl, Han, Wiesar, LaBanche, Padilla, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosenthal, Smith, Weiss, Wiss, and Sangar City. 11 members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, hold on one second. Ms. Perry, would you be ready for your presentation? Okay, I'd like to recognize next from Council District 9, Councilwoman Jan Perry. It's Pat Tobin and her crew would come on up. Hello, Ms. Smallwood McKenzie. Pat Tobin and Posse. Pat Tobin and Posse. Pat Tobin and Posse. <laughs> Pat Tobin party of 40. Uh, party of 40. Take your tags off. Take off your tags. She's in PR. Take off your tags. Pat says take your tags off. Pat is in public relations. 
It is a pleasure to be joined by this wonderful woman. She's a great person and someone I think many of us respect, Pat Tobin. You can see, let's give Pat a hand. You can see from the number of people who have come here today how much Pat is loved and respected by the people whose lives she has touched. Pat, the founder of Tobin and Associates, an African-American owned, woman operated public relations firm which was founded when she realized both the impact and the power of the African-American consumer when few major advertisers or corporations were acknowledging this segment of our population. Now in the year 2006, Tobin and Associates is celebrating its 23rd year in business and has become one of the most prominent African-American owned public relations firms, public relations firm in the country. It was Pat's entrepreneurial spirit that propelled her from a one woman shop at a kitchen table into a multifaceted enterprise. This year, Pat has received a number of accolades for her work to add to her very, very long list of previous honors. And I'm just gonna tell you just a few. She received the Legacy Ladies 2005 Torch Award, Minority in Business Magazine, 2003 Entrepreneurial Spirit Award, the Southern California Minority Business Development Council's 2003 Supplier of the Year in the Class One category, the, the Success Hall of Fame 2003 Award, the 2002 Black Hollywood Education and Resource Center President's Award, 2002 NAACP Act So Verna Canson Award, and the 2001 National Association of Women Business Owners Member of the Year Award. That's just a small sampling. She's a role model to many of us, a leader not just in the African American community, but in the public relations, media relations community. And she has paved the way for the next generation of highly motivated entrepreneurial women. So I wanted to take this time to recognize this extraordinary woman publicly who continues to shine and energize all of us as she moves forward. And it's her strength and her spirit and her charisma, and she's also extremely pushy. Uh, <laughs> and she will drag you through a crowd and force you in the middle of a picture, but that's what she's good at. Um, Pat Tobin, let's give her a big hand. Hey. I, I think Pat like may to, have a few uh, words for us. Before that, if I may, we have Councilmember yeah. Parks who would like to add his good wishes as well. Mr. Parks? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Pat, good morning. Uh, I just am so pleased that Jan brought you here and to uh, you know, you never quite know where you're going to see Pat. You could be at any place in America and you'll look up and Pat just shows up uh, to see her at the uh, Trumpet Awards and a variety of things. But she has a very unique quality. It's just not working. She has a ability to look at how she can ingrain herself in the community. Her projects are just not money-making projects. They're talking about building legacies in the community. And that's always been a great appreciation uh, for myself and many. Uh, she's not the most well-publicized public relations person, but she does very meaningful things uh, in the community and how she uh, picks her projects and things of that nature. And I'm just pleased that you're here. Uh, you know, maybe uh, you're going to slow down one day and get a little rest, but I don't think so. I think you're just going to keep at this pace 100 miles an hour, looking for things to get involved with, and I just appreciate what you bring in that uh, level of class and everything you touch. And uh, it's just great seeing you here, and great seeing the progress you've made and the uh, service you provide the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, Pat, Pat has many, many fans, uh, and uh, one of them is here today. I think you'll recognize her. She's not just a client, she's a friend. And I, she only has one name, and so you're gonna know who she is. Amarosa. Amarosa. <laughs> I just want to first thank you, Councilwoman Perry, for acknowledging not just a great publicist, a great businesswoman, but a, an amazing human being. Before I got here uh, in Hollywood, I worked in Washington in the White House, and you still would hear the name Pat Tobin. If you're in business, you hear the name Pat Tobin. 
if you're in show business, then you know the name Pat Tobin. So I join a long list of television personalities and celebrities in lending our voice to this great day and to this great woman. Now, if you know Pat and you spend any time with her, the joy of her life is her grandson, Aaron. And if you've spent any time with her recently, you'll know that Aaron has become the first freshman and the only freshman to serve on the varsity basketball team. And that has just made Camel her Hall. at Camel Hall. She's like, at Camel Hall. So I, and, and I celebrate that she celebrates family. And Pat, I have never had a chance to thank you when uh, everyone was enthralled in The Apprentice and I was working with Donald Trump and everybody was either loving to hate me or just loving me. Hating to love me, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Pat always loved me and she always supported me and she threw me on every red carpet <laughs> in this town. So I thank you, thank you, and I thank you. Oh, thank you so much for this honor, this opportunity. Councilwoman Jan Perry, you and your staff are awesome. Awesome, awesome, and to Gar President, are you acting President Garcetti? Are you president? Who are you? President. <laughs> We've been involved in Hollywood for 22 Absolutely. years. Extraordinary. We're Tobin and Associates uh, were located in Hollywood for 22 years. We moved to Hancock Park now, though. Okay. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the Tobin staff, where's the Tobin team of, of you guys? Thank you so much for your continued support. Without the team Tobin, I wouldn't be able to do the things we do. And there's a group of women, they're called Women Supporting Sisters. I'm sorry, Sister Supporting Sisters. Janice Smallwood McKenzie, the networking coach who keeps me in line, and Sister Supporting Sisters, please. Benita Perkins, you guys, where are you? Raise your hand. Thank you, ladies. These sisters really do a wonderful job. And I just want to say this. It is said that a prophet has no honor in his or her own land, but I've been here for 30 years. Write that down, 3-0. 30 years. <laughs> This is my land. I'm honored and humble, and I promise you, I promise you, today is only the beginning. I want to leave a legacy, the Tobin School of PR, so that other women and entrepreneurs and people of color and just everybody interested in being a business person could learn the marketing and PR techniques that I've been blessed with. So thank you, council members. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Perry, and thank you, Ms. Tobin, for everything that you've done for this city and for this community. We really appreciate it. Um, next, I'd like to recognize for our next presentations a uh, okay. council member from the 11th District, Bill Rosendahl. Okay. I'll follow you. Everybody get your purses and all that will come in the back. Get your purse. Get my Thank you. Oh, my God. Okay. Good morning, City Council, and good morning to everybody watching this out there in uh, Channel 35 land. And may I start off by uh, saying that the holiday seasons officially begin tonight with Hanukkah. Uh, and happy Hanukkah to everybody who celebrates the eight days of Hanukkah. And I say to the Christians, Merry Christmas. And I say to the Christians and African Americans, Happy Kwanzaa. And I say to all of us, to a healthy and prosperous and peaceful 2007. In keeping with the spirit of this moment in time, I want to talk about the Noel Foundation and its executive director, Rebecca Russler. Could they please come on up and stand next to me? Um, and in, in this context, what we're talking about here is a person whose birthday uh, we've been celebrating actually all year long. And we've been celebrating it because this great lady has made a huge difference in the world around us today. The Noel Foundation was founded in 1989 by businesswoman and my good friend, Noel Irwin Henschel. Noel Irwin Henschel, in her compassion for those in need, she was in Calcutta, India in 1988. And there she met and worked with Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa inspired her to establish the Noel Foundation, an organization dedicated to helping people throughout the world. The Noel Foundation programs include support for missionaries of charity who work with the poorest of the poor, assisting homeless mothers and children, 
assisting those aff affected with HIV and AIDS, adoption programs as well, supplies and meals for families on Skid Row, health care for needy women and children, after school education and mentoring for disadvantaged children, specialized training for teachers in under-resourced schools, cancer treatment and research programs. The Noel Foundation also provides food and supplies for missionaries of charity to distribute throughout the city's homeless every Sunday. In fact, I experienced a Christmas holiday party at Noel's house and all of the great food were then moved to the community to feed the homeless. Nothing goes to waste. Through the leadership of Executive Director Rebecca Russler, the great lady right next to me, the Noel Foundation continues to build on its foundation of giving to those in need. Rebecca began her humanitarian work at the young age of six, helping family members prepare and serve food to the poor living in her hometown in Missouri. She later moved to California and continued to help the disadvantaged by volunteering at soup kitchens. Her current role with the Noel Foundation has enabled her to help those most in need in the Los Angeles community. I would like to express my sincerest appreciation to Rebecca Russler, Executive Director of the Noel Foundation, for her outstanding service, altruism, compassion, and her dedication to the well-being of others. And when we celebrate birthdays, one of the things I always say is, we are all blessed by your presence. By you being born, you've added to the community. And that is what Rebecca has done. But the formal introduction will come from Noel Irwin Henschel. Noel. Thank you, Bill, for your wonderful words and your friendship, and thank you for the city, to the City Council for honoring someone today um, who is one of those angels in our city that um, deserves recognition, someone who has the humility that actually behind the scenes is hands-on touching and helping the poor in our community. Uh, and in the words of Mother Teresa, she said that holiness um, and goodness is not the privilege of a few, but the responsibility and opportunity for many. And that is um, what Rebecca is all about. Rebecca is someone who, um, she's the one that's out there, as recently as yesterday, buying cooking oil and socks and caps and sleeping bags to get them to the missionaries of charity in Linwood and then to be side by side delivering them to the people that are living uh, under the bridges here in our city of Los Angeles. And um, in addition to that, Rebecca is the one who's running down regularly to Rosarito Beach where we've just opened a home in uh, Rosarito with the missionaries of charity to help men, women and children that are dying of AIDS. and. Um, other, uh, other terminal illnesses. And so uh, we don't have that opportunity that often to really um, put a, <laughs> a halo over our little angels here in our community. But um, I have to say something else about Rebecca that shows her selflessness, and that is with her own family. And Mother Teresa also taught us that how important it is that we love our family. And Rebecca is the one there with her family that is always there for them and for our family. And then within our business, American Tours International, uh, when we've had anyone that's been injured or anyone that's been sick of all the visitors that we bring every year, she's the one that's been there to take care of them, to take them to the hospital, to make sure that they um, get back to their country safely. So thank you. Thank you very much for that, and we have a certificate, and we will be presenting it to you for your outstanding commitment and work to the community. Just stand in the middle there and right on the other side where you go like that. This is for you. This is because we appreciate the fact that not only were you born and joined us, but what you've done with your life has been great. So we, we have Mr. Uh, Parks that uh, has the floor. Bill, I want to say thank you for bringing uh, this organization to the council. And Noel, see you Sunday. Uh, Noel is a wonderful person uh, with all the things she's done uh, to bring. Uh, uh, one of her great benefits is brought uh, an honor to Rosa Parks before she passed away to honor her and give her an award. But the number of things that she's involved with, you wouldn't believe that she also runs a major cooperation 
uh, in a, as a business person in, uh, in the travel agency uh, area. You wouldn't believe that she has a large family that she gets to college and to school and all that on her uh, herself. So in addition to all of those things, she kind of runs a foundation. And Rebecca, thank you for being the, uh, the legs and arms for that foundation because it does great work. But I just don't uh, think we could have uh, Noelle here without commending her for all the things she's done in the city and in the United States uh, in reality and say keep up the good work. Uh, we think that uh, the Noelle Foundation is just uh, basically uh, uh, chipping at the edges to where it will keep blossoming and continue. And hopefully one day, as Mother Teresa has said to you over and over again, that we could eliminate hunger and eliminate uh, poverty and a lot of things because of people like yourself in this foundation. So thank you. Well, I want to also offer my congratulations. Uh, we were on that trip to Asia with the mayor and the wonderful work you do not only here in America, but uh, the relationships have established overseas in China, Korea, Japan. So uh, it showed me a, a lot of connections, a lot of good work that you've done worldwide. So congratulations to you and continue that effort on behalf of humanity. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity. And now with Tom uh, yeah, LaVange. Thank you, uh, Dennis, real quickly. I was out of the room with our honorees before, but I want to congratulate Rebecca. Is that the correct way to say that beautiful name? And what's beautiful about people in this city is when they help other people do great things. So Rebecca, you are to be highlighted for doing what you're doing. And I think when you go back to Noel and her family of eight girls, is that correct? You're from a family of eight? You know, your parents helped you do something that made your hands always out to help others. Above and beyond, as Council Member Park spoke of your business, your very successful business, and as Mr. Zine spoke on the trip that you recently took with the mayor. That is the beauty of life, and this is the season to have more beauty of life as we look out to, with joy to help other people. So other people are motivated to help other people and do great things. So I just stand and to salute you, Rebecca, and Mr. Rosendahl, always for bringing this all together, and some great people behind you as well. A lot of great people behind a lot of great people today. That's what makes it happen. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Madam you, Mr. President, and, and again, thank you so much for what you're doing for all of us in community. When you help the least of our brethren, you help all of us. So thank you so much. Thank you. I'm thank standing you, have a here second. still, Madam President, because behind my back, holding me up while I was doing the first presentation is the Bureau of Street Services and with them is the Petrochem Public-Private Partnership. The Bureau of Street Services with Petrochem, Petrochem has created a public-private partnership that improves street preservation through the use of pre-mixed rubberized slurry seal for recycling tires. This is an amazing process. Slurry seal projects that would take weeks to complete under the conventional methods are now completed within eight hours. Did you hear that? Eight hours, that used to take weeks. Let's give them a round of applause for that as a start. And here's the best part, folks. 25,935 tires are used for each mile that is slurry sealed. Take the old tires, you put them to work, you recycle them, it's good for the environment. This pre-mixed rubberized product allows the city of Los Angeles to extend the life of our infrastructure by using a very innovative and effective recycling program. This process is now a Bureau of Street Services preventive maintenance standard. The success of this partnership is directly attributed to the coordination between the Bureau's program manager, Mr. John Brock. Where's Mr. John Brock? Right here. right here, folks. Come up a little closer so the world can see you. And PMI's Mr. Kim Morris. Mr. Morris, come on up close, too. Folks, these are the two who work this private public partnership and make, make it work. And actually, right here is one of the big shots. Come on up a little closer, okay? Um, this is uh, Mr. Mike Burroughs, who's a partner with PMI. Most grateful for this cooperation. Mr. Kim Morris has over 21 years experience in this asphalt industry and has worked with PMI. 
Mr. John Brock started with the City of Los Angeles in the Urban Forestry Division in 1988 and has received numerous condemnations for his highly professional work. This dedication to this partnership resulted in the completion, get a load of this number folks, 300.22 miles in 2004 and 2005 fiscal year and 300 miles point eight in 2005, 2006. Okay, that's 600 miles we've done with this new recycled ability by taking old tires. This public-private partnership led to the Bureau receiving nationwide recognition by the Federal Highway Administration with an Environmental Excellence Award for Excellence in Recycling in September of 2003. And I might add that Mr. Greg Smith, who was Chair of Public Works, played a major role from the elected standpoint in encouraging this partnership, working with this partnership, and he would be the one to present this, even though I'm Chair of Public Works, the previous one, he's coming off of a plane from a trip uh, that he had to take uh, on behalf of all of us. On behalf of the City of Los Angeles, I would like to thank the Department of Public Works, Bureau of Street Services, and Petrochem for their commitment to safety, quality, and environmentalism. It is through your dedication and hard work the City of Los Angeles is recognized nationwide as a leader on slurry seal applications. And now I would like to introduce a person who doesn't need any introduction that has been a major force in our city in getting our streets paved, our sidewalks fixed, our trees trimmed, our alleys done, where the rubber literally hits the road. And that's Bill Robertson to say a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, as Councilman Rosendahl mentioned, uh, this program, this public-private uh, partnership, uh, is recognized nationally. It, it is being starting to be recognized internationally. We get inquiries. Uh, all the time from other municipalities around the country wanting to know what we're doing, how we're doing, and how we're accomplishing it. And, and why it's, it's a great program, I, I have to say that uh, without these two gentlemen, and that's the reason we're really here today, is to honor these two gentlemen for taking on uh, an impossible task. Uh, we do more slurry seal than the average municipality has miles uh, under their control. Uh, we were doing 100 miles for years. And when we took on and were able to expand the program to 300 miles, uh, a lot of folks said it couldn't be done. Uh, but these two gentlemen, their ability to coordinate, motivate uh, forces on both sides of the partnership, uh, it has been just very, very successful. And it's really these two gentlemen that I want to thank this morning for their hard efforts. And of course, our good friends at Petrochem, the partnership uh, that is really unique. Uh, uh, in the uh, public uh, uh, works field. So thank you very much, Councilman. I appreciate uh, uh, you taking the time and, and Councilmember Smith, your support for public works and the things we do. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Do you want to say something? You want to thank, thank you. And I just want to add my congratulations. Um, this is a department uh, that we count on. We get more calls on uh, can you repave my street um, and how we can do that. And I probably call uh, this general manager more than anyone uh, to uh, tell him about a street. I want him to drive over and to see the problems uh, when he, since he, rep he lives in my district, so I can ask him just to drive by. Uh, but I think they're always thinking outside the box and looking at some uh, extraordinary things where we can do more with less some years. And and this is one of those instances. And Bill has uh, become a wonderful chair of this committee and uh, is, is an advocate for this department as well. So both, both Bills, uh, congratulations. And to uh, everyone who made this possible. And I want to acknowledge Mr. LeBond. Chief Well, thank time. you very much. I know it's transportation, Ms. Grew, all the way. It's public safety, Chief Bratton, all the way, number one. And public works. Public works right there, making it, improving those roads. Thank you very much, Bill Robertson and all that. And let me ask you just a historic question. What was the first street you did this system on? All right, Bill, it's yours. I, I believe it was in Council District 4. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. That's all I need to know. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very Mr. much, Rosenthal. Madam President. Thank you. I think our next presentation, we were waiting for uh, the mayor. I don't see him uh, yet. I um, also don't see Mr. Garcetti for a presentation. 
So let's see um, if I think CD 14. Mr. Wiesar. Okay. All right. If we. Okay. One, one minute. Okay. All right. We'll just take a slight f four. CD4 is ready? Okay. Uh, I think we do anticipate the mayor any minute, but Mr. Labonge, are you ready for your presentation? Okay. Getting a little bit there. Over the music today, we're here to salute a very special waste drum dance team for the American Chinese Cultural Association. Let's give them a big hand right there. And what was so exciting on our sister city festival held uh, just in September, we had a great parade. And the most fantastic parade, it started from the original farmer's market and went right through the middle of the grove to the grandstand stage and everybody followed, but it was led by these great people of the American Cultural Association, American Chinese Cultural Association. David Lin is their president who's here with us, but Jeffrey Chong, who is our great president of the Quanzhou Sister City Committee is here. I want to give you all certificates of that because it was so inspiring to see the work that was done. Mr. Chung, please, for some remarks. Thank you, Councilman Labong. Um, we're very fortunate and we feel honored to have the opportunity to participate in this great sister event at Farmer's Market and Grove. And uh, the whole delegation was actually led by the beautiful dancing performance uh, provided by the American Chinese Cultural Association. It was a great event. Appreciate you know, the effort and the great leadership that Councilman Labonge has been providing to the Sister City organization. And I also like to give my uh, heartfelt thankfulness to the entire city council for the continuous support, and particularly to Councilman uh, Labonge, Councilman Zai, and Councilman uh, Reyes, and many others. Thank you. Parks, he's head of the Finance Committee. Oh, yes, and Parks in the Finance Committee. And thank you all for the support, and we look forward to further promoting the city of Los Angeles okay. worldwide. Okay, and now I'd like to give the podium to David Lin, the president of the association. Very okay, good. Joanna, you're next. Uh, thank you very much. We are very glad and happy to be here, and thank you. Uh, it's uh, highly appreciated for what you did for us. Thank you very much, and Merry Christmas. Shay Shay, Shay Shay. And also, the leader, Joanna Wang, the chief of the Art Assembly. Joanna. Yeah, I'm very glad to be here. This is a great opportunity for us. And I'm very, very surprised that uh, Mr. LeBon shows our dancing at the uh, uh, farm market. And I hope that this will give a chance to produce ourselves a little bit. And I hope in the future we can serve the community better. Thank you. Oh, Joanna, you sure do. Give Joanna, it was such a beautiful sight all of them dancing, and all the parade of people behind you led the way that day. Give them a big hand, the American Chinese Cultural Association. We have certificates we'll present in the back. Thank you. Turn that up, Kenny, as we walk over to the back. Boom, boom. It was a great day. Thank you, Madam President. Here we go. Right here. Thank you. I know we have the mayor uh, who is coming in for our next uh, presentation. Hold on for one minute. I think he's being caught in the back.
We went through the agenda earlier. Do or uh, can we go through? They called the roll. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Zine and uh, our Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa for special presentations. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good morning. We're joined by. Our mayor, Antonio Villaraigosa. Let's hear it for the mayor. Gentlemen, ladies. We have Chief Bratton, Los Angeles Police Chief with us. Chief Bratton. And Maggie, Maggie Whalen, the general manager of the personnel department. Career Service Awards, Public Safety Ceremony. On May 19th, 2006, we honor 39 civilian employees for their exemplary service to the City of Los Angeles. Today, I have the privilege of participating in honoring seven public safety employees for the distinguished service to the city. These seven individuals embody the qualities that demonstrate what service to others really stands for. These individuals are to be awarded the 2005 Career Service Awards. In honoring these outstanding employees, we are recognizing all public safety employees for the many services they provide with dedication, innovation, courage, and pride. It is a pleasure to have the support of our mayor, city council, personnel department for this program, and I as the chair of the council's personnel committee am privileged to be associated with it. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our mayor, Antonio Villaraigosa, and our Chief of Police, Bill Braddon, and also Maggie Wayland, And Mr. Mayor, I'm going to turn the microphone over to you, and then we will proceed with the awarding of the certificates for the individuals. Mr. Mayor, Antonio Villaraigosa. Uh, I wondered who that group was. It's from my neighborhood, <laughs> Bo Heights, the Wolfpack. Yeah. I'm honored to be here today to assist uh, in presenting the Public Safety Career Service Awards. I don't have to tell uh, you uh, just how uh, dangerous uh, the job of a public safety officer of our police officers is. I could tell you uh, these are a group of women that I'm, and men I'm very proud of, uh, people who put their lives on the line, people who work with the community, uh, people who are doing everything they can uh, in service of others. Uh, to protect and serve uh, is a motto that uh, is ingrained uh, in the culture of our public safety um, service awardees today. And so it's an honor to be here with all of you. Chief Brad. Thank you. Again, I'll echo the mayor's comments that one of the great things about being chief of police is I get to tell the stories of the actions heroism, bravery, public service of the men and women of the department. And it's a pleasure being here today, and I want to thank the Council, Public Safety, Dennis Nine, for this acknowledgement of the men and women of the department who over the past year have protected and have served. And they are reflective of the 9,300 officers and 3,000 civilians that we have in this department who are committed to that goal. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All of the 2005 Public Safety Award recipients demonstrated in the unique ways courage, compassion, and our life-saving skills that made a difference in the lives of our citizens. As I call your name, will you please come forward to the podium to receive your award. The first four individuals are being recognized for demonstrating outstanding dedication to duty or outstanding leadership qualities. They are Officer Robert Gallego Sr., Officer Jesse Sanchez, and Lieutenant Charles Wampler.
And we also have Officer April Carb. I understand she's unable to be here today? Okay, thank you. Officer Robert Gallego Sr. Recognized for the outstanding Gallegos. What did I say? Gallegos. Gallegos. <laughs> Via Ragosa. Very good. Gallegos. Outstanding unmatched drive that has marked his 33 year career with 21 of those years as a member of the SWAT team. Yeah, isn't that great? Right there. Look at that guy. Look at that man. <laughs> Countless array of notable incidents that involve both tactical interventions and training assignments. North Hollywood bank robbery, Devonshire area downed officer rescue, and an array of incidents of workplace violence. Embarked an enterprise to establish new and innovative methods that would allow for the safe and effective resolution of dangerous life-threatening situations. Through his hard work and desire to achieve the goal, the new tactic, immediate action, rapid deployment was established, and over 6,000 officers have been trained in the use of this proven and valuable tool. 33 years, and you're still on the job, still going strong. Yes, sir. Congratulations to you. There you go. <laughs> Officer Jesse Sanchez. Officer Sanchez has been recognized for his attention, duty, and details, tenacity, courage, calm, quick thinking, and utmost professionalism under the extraordinary stress of the Metrolink train incident, which occurred January 26, 2005. Thrust into an assignment, usually handled by a commanding officer, despite the grim circumstances, immediately began handling all administrative duties at the command post, delegated all incoming resources, started chronological logs, provided outstanding updates, which assisted the incident commander and his staff to effectively handle the incident. Through his actions, clearly made the police department shine during a tragic and unfortunate accident. Officer Sanchez, congratulations. <laughs> and Lieutenant Charles Wampler, recognized for his 29 years of dedicated service to the Los Angeles Police Department where he has distinguished himself as a leader, a police officer, and a citizen been credited on two occasions with entering a burning building and saving the lives of several individuals at a cost to his own health, for which he was awarded the department's highest honor, the Medal of Valor. Second highest honor, the police star for his bravery and courage. He has also been recipient of several meritorious, meritorious, I got meritorious unit citations. I never got that, so that's all right, meritorious. <laughs> Chuck, congratulations, who I've known for many, many years. Those are our three recipients, and congratulations to you all for your efforts and your activities for the people of Los Angeles. Our next category, two courageous individuals being recognized for placing themselves in danger beyond the call of duty. They are Officer Mario Cardona and Marisol Frial. They are coming forward. <laughs> Officer Cardona being honored for the bravery and courage he showed in November 2004 as part of a rapid response team involved in a chaotic situation at a rave party. In spite of having been shot and seriously wounded, gave chase of an active shooter of two individuals, confronted with not only darkness, but also a crowd of hysterical partygoers trying to escape the location. He found himself in an immediate defense of life situation. Even though he was shot, he did not return fire as he knew that if he fired, there was a high probability that he would strike an innocent bystander at the location. Knew the contact shot was the only option and made his decision to move on the suspect. Having closed the gap, grabbed the suspect and from a close contact position and upward trajectory to ensure the safety of everyone who might be in the area fatally wounded by him. If not for the efforts of this officer, it is likely that the suspect would have shot and possibly killed other victims. Officer Cardona, congratulations. And our next officer is being recognized for her heroic acts of placing herself in danger beyond the call of duty to save others. March 24, 2005, she and her partner, Officer Lopez, responded to a bank robbery in progress. This is amazing. The robber entered the bank, stated he had a bomb, demanded money. Prior to leaving the bank, the robber handcuffed the explosive device to the teller's wrist. Upon arrival, the officers found a hysterical teller who feared she was going to die. Something had to be done to separate the teller from the device before she lost control and thus no longer able to stay still. <sighs> Officer Frial knew her partner was married with children. 
She, on the other hand, had no children. Under no obligation to do so, she chose to place herself in danger and save a distressed citizen and keep her partner out of harm's way. She volunteered to attempt to remove the device from the teller's wrist. She unlocked the handcuff and removed it from the teller's wrist. She held the device until the teller and all others were safe. She then placed the device on the counter and made a hasty retreat to a safe location. The bomb squad eventually determined that the device was a facsimile, but that could not be determined prior to sending in a robot to disrupt it. Congratulations. And our final category, service beyond the call of duty to a person whose life, safety, and health was in jeopardy. Uh, he's not here? He's not here. He's not here. Uh, Officer uh, Sergeant Frank Anguano, who was unable to attend today's ceremony. And briefly, the sergeant being recognized for his compassion, attention to duty, life-saving efforts on January 25, 2005. At a collision scene, the sergeant found a mother holding a lifeless body of her two-year-old son. The child had no heartbeat and was not breathing, even though there may have been a risk to his own health. The sergeant was able to bring the child back to life by using CPR. An ambulance arrived, transported the child to the USC Medical Center, where he was treated for a fractured clavicle, bruised lung, and con concussion. Nine days later, the child was home with his mother recovering. Congratulations. I want to congratulate all of the recipients from the Los Angeles Police Department. We talk about the LAPD family, that this mayor and this chief of police is very concerned and committed to this LAPD family. So the people who are here representing Los Angeles Police Department, the recipients, along with their family members and other members of the department, we thank you for what you do every single day. Our mayor and this council is trying to bolster your resources uh, with additional personnel to make that job easier than you challenge every single day. So congratulations to you all, and we will go back and take some photos in the back of the room. Uh, anything else? Chief. All right. Madam President, thank you very much. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all the officers uh, who were honored today. I'd now like to also acknowledge the mayor for a, uh, another presentation um, that he is going to be giving this morning. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Dennis, you're taking me to the... Yeah, yeah. Who's doing it with me? Just you. Oh, just me? Are they here? Yeah. Isn't that how it works? KTLA's in the house. Is there a relationship with the LA Times? <laughs> how are you? Good to see you. Um, Madam President. I want to congratulate uh, the Los Angeles Times on the occasion of its 125th anniversary, which took place on December 4th, uh, 2006. Now, the Los Angeles Times, uh, as we all know, provides news and information coverage of Southern California, connecting with uh, some 5 million readers a day. Uh, they've received some 37 Pulitzer Prizes five of which are gold medals for public service. The Times this year published eight special themed sections highlighting 125 years of Southern California history. And the history buffs here, and I know that Council Member LaBonge is somewhere, um, there uh, are a number of interesting sections on sports, uh, real estate, Hollywood, you know, in the city of cars, cars of course, education, fashion, LA Strivers and what LA gives the world. Uh, the Times this year also had its star added to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, they raised some $4.7 million to benefit disadvantaged children and youth in the community and we're very thankful uh, to them for that. The Times over the last year has devoted significant co coverage to the tragedy of homelessness, the plight of 88,000 people living in the county uh, we want to acknowledge their leadership on that. You know they sponsor the, the Reading by Nine Literacy Initiative in this city uh, where 
Unfortunately, we have the highest uh, illiteracy rate in America. That is a very, very important program that strives to have 95% of children in the five county market reading at grade level by nine. Uh, with the mayor's partnership effort in schools, we're gonna make that reading uh, by six uh, because that has to be the goal. Standing here with the members of the city council and on behalf of all of the residents of the city of Los Angeles, I wanna congratulate the Los Angeles Times for 125 years. Um, I'm here today because uh, in my job as mayor, uh, I got to kiss up to the LA Times. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, uh, I'm here primarily because, that was a good one. Huh? <laughs> I'm here, yeah, it's true, he says, uh, I'm here in all seriousness because when you think of Los Angeles, uh, you think of a few institutions and one of them is the Los Angeles Times. And whether you agree with them on this issue or that, uh, they've been intertwined uh, with the making of Los Angeles throughout the years. And so uh, we're very excited to acknowledge 125 years. We just celebrated 125 years at USC, another great institution that I love very much. Um, and uh, I, here with us is Kim McCleary, uh, LaFrance, the VP of Public Affairs, and Marion uh, Shima, the Public Affairs of the Public Affairs Office somewhere? Yes, uh, to accept this proclamation. And I want you to know, it's signed by every member of the Los Angeles City Council, all of whom want to kiss up to the Times as well. <laughs> and so, uh, on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, we want to acknowledge 125 years. <laughs> it's, we want to acknowledge uh, the austere uh, history of this organization, the 37 Pulitzer Prizes, and we want uh, a lot more in the coming years. Uh, the commitment to Los Angeles over those 125 years, uh, the coverage of issues like homelessness and education, all uh, reflective of a newspaper uh, that has been a big part of the history of Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Don't be shy. Yes, absolutely. That's what. That's why we're here. Thank you, Mayor Villagrosa and uh, Pro Tem President Gruel and distinguished members of the City Council. We are so honored to accept this proclamation. As the mayor mentioned, we launched the beginning of this year with an exciting series of sections uh, talking about the rich history of Los Angeles and many community events, which um, culminated last week with our receiving the star on the Walk of Fame. So it's so appropriate that we conclude our anniversary with this wonderful proclamation, which we appreciate so much. As the mayor said, the times and the city are so intertwined with their history, with the city celebrating its 225th anniversary this year. And, but what we've found with anniversaries, as much as it's a wonderful opportunity to look backward, it's also such a great opportunity to look forward and to our future. And we know more than anybody that LA is so situated to be on the threshold of being the capital of the 21st century with its economic strength, its strength of its ports, its diversity, relationships with China, which you're helping. And so we have three commitments to you looking forward. Number one, we are going to continue to strengthen our coverage of the city and the region, part hey. particularly um, by engaging more with civic leaders and business leaders and the community to make sure we're covering those great stories of Los Angeles. Number two, you're going to continue to see us shining a spotlight on those issues that are important to you and the City Council, homelessness, education, because we feel that's with our quality journalism our role to make sure that we improve the quality of life in Los Angeles. And thirdly, and most importantly, we're going to continue to be a strong corporate citizen with you trying to help the lives of disadvantaged children and youth through our grants and 
our Reading by Nine program because our children, as you all say so often, are our future. Now last week, um, I know because of everybody's busy schedules, um, not very many of you were able to attend our Walk of Fame ceremony. So we didn't want you to feel left out. Tom Labange was there and did a great job, but we have a small token. So he token. was kissing up that day too. Yes, <laughs> but we have a small token for each of you, the 15 council members and you, Mr. Mayor, which is, now you, this is chocolate. It's the Los Angeles Times Award of Excellence star. <laughs> no gifts policy, he says, look at him. So I'll give you the responsibility of handing this oh, out to I the council member. Oh, I get to hand out the candies. Okay. So with that, thank you very much for this very beautiful proclamation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Mr. Reyes, before you leave, before you leave, Mr. Reyes would like to say a few words. Yes, I just wanted to take a moment and address our, our guest in our chambers. And I just want to thank you for your words. Um, I, in particular, want to just amplify the fact that at a day and age when our children, 47% are not graduating from high school, at a day and age when our immigrant communities feel like they are under attack by some of the messages that we get at the national level, that I truly appreciate the fact that we need to diversify our ability to send these messages to such a great diversity that we have here in this great city. I look forward to working with the LA Times and being able to reach those communities who, quite frankly, don't feel part of the mainstream. And as we continue to evolve as a city, Look at our technologies, look at how we invest in our ability to communicate. I look forward to working with you as well on those very salient issues. So thank you for being here in our chambers. Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Appreciate that very much. Uh, as a former journalist, I, I had an opportunity to create some public affairs programming. The Times is, is, is truly the base drop to most of everything that goes on. You know, when they do television, they read the paper in the morning, they get ideas from that, they go forward with it. So you have a multiplier effect on the media in Southern California. I appreciated your comment about focus on news. The problem we have is that the television media does a lot of soundbite, bleed if it leads, crime stuff, and a lot of the more substantive issues don't get enough airtime in 90 seconds or two minutes. It's unfortunate because the public gets the television more than they get anything else. So your paper plays a critical role in giving us facts and information. So I encourage you, the more local news you do, the more information you give to the public, the stronger the people's connection to the democracy becomes. Some of us this morning held a press conference about petition signing for a ballot measure. We were concerned about how that was discussed on that petition. People were signing things, not realizing what they were signing. That's where the Times comes in. I'm sure you'll do a story about that and how manipulation of the public always takes place because you become really the base drop to all of us. So I applaud the paper for being around 125 years and I hope in the next 125 years we see substantial increase in local affairs and public affairs facts and information for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosendahl, and thank you. I believe we have Mr. Huizar. Oh, Mr. Garcetti. Mr. Garcetti is next. I'm sorry. Come join us, Kojil folks. I believe the, the mayor is making his way around as well, and uh, Ms. Gruel and myself are very pleased uh, to be able to present the annual winners of the Coalition on the Environment and Jewish Life of Southern California Environmentalists of the Year. Um, the coalition, which is also known by its acronym COGEL, is an internationally recognized organization that unites Jewish and environmental values in advocacy of environmental policies. And they've honored some extraordinary stewards of the environment who are here with us today. Um, this year, folks who made an impact and have continued to make an impact in their lives, in different media, in different contexts, but nevertheless for our city and for our world to be a more sustainable 
um, place. Much as Jewish law and tradition has been passed from one generation to the next throughout the ages, environmental stewardship has been entrusted to this generation in order to protect and in order to preserve the planet for our children and our grandchildren and beyond. In fact, I'm reminded of what Native Americans used to do in terms of their use of the land, and they would think about their own actions seven generations ahead, that seven generations forward is who they should be thinking about. Kojol's work over the past decade has framed environmental issues in this kind of spiritual context as an everyday concern by everyday people, but also something which has a larger uh, universal context as well. And by collaborating with other faith groups through the Interfaith Environmental Council and coordinating within the Jewish community, Kojol has worked to instill environmental values as part of our basic set of core values. So I'd like to uh, turn over the microphone to Wendy Gruel, our president pro tem, to say a couple things, and then we'll hear from Lee Wallach, who is, of course, our president of Kojol and the Interfaith Environmental Council. Wendy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Garcetti. And uh, Eric and I have had the opportunity to uh, co-host some of their events or MC uh, their events in the last few years and to really uh, support uh, individuals and organizations who have furthered the importance of uh, having the faith base and the Jewish community involved in environmental issues and how critical that is. And just this last week uh, where we were able to have at a uh, synagogue talking about what a difference people have made, and have made, and you'll see today uh, two individuals um, who are, are represented. One, uh, Joe Edmonston, who's uh, the environmentalist of the year, who is, those of us know, one of the uh, most important people uh, in our region in ensuring that we have uh, available land, open space uh, to our future and our environment. And uh, Lawrence Bender, who has so many accomplishments, we're going to talk specifically about his role in the um, Inconvenient Truth um, and what he's used, uh, the power of media, uh, to get the message out. And, um, and last uh, but not least, uh, Lee Wallach, um, who has been uh, an incredible person, who, who took this issue and said there is a need to have uh, the faith-based community and the Jewish community involved in environmental issues even more so, and how can we coalesce that? and therefore creating um, and this organization and leading it. And I know we have Ron Stone, who is here as well, uh, a big supporter. But I just wanted to, to say thank you uh, for uh, what Kojal has done, what they're going to do in the future, uh, because we know um, our, my child's future, your future, is about the environment and protecting that and making sure that we have clean water and clean air and look at the entire world. So anyways, uh, congratulations uh, to all of you, and thank you, Eric, for letting me join Absolutely. you today in this uh, presentation. All right. Thank you, Ms. Grill. Yes. Mr. Rosenau, and then we will pr present the awards. Uh, thank Mr. you, Mr. Rosenau. President. Uh, um, First, I want to thank Joe Edmonston, because without your leadership, we would not have the Nancy and Dick Reardon Trail about to be opened. You provided a major role in bringing community together around an issue that was terrific, and we appreciate gratefully that. Uh, folks out there, there's a photo of me, if you can see it, but that's planting a tree uh, on their brochure. I'll never forget this. I was, I was a candidate it's the for the hottest selling brochure ever it in It was history. pouring <laughs> rain, and there were literally hundreds um, of community activists planting trees throughout the area. I mean, to take uh, something biblical, something spiritual, and turn it into reality, the reality of making the world a better place is what it's all about. And I just want to congratulate all of you for what you're doing. You, you, you know, it, it is the Lord's work, in my opinion, keeping the world connected to its nature. Uh, obviously, the convenient truth is for real. We have global warming going on. And the more we nurture Mother Earth, uh, the more we're nurturing ourselves. Thank you all for doing that. God bless you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Reyes. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, thank you for your bag, recyclable. Uh, it helps us with our plastic. leading the plastic bag uh, that, that's right. group. But, I know Mr. Reyes is, is all for recyclable bags. <laughs> so uh, this helps us in our environment, but just as important, I know at times when I speak about density, the, the people will say, well, there he goes again, 40,000 people per square mile and the pressures, but the fact is the hard work that you have accomplished as, as persons being recognized and allowing folks to understand what those pressures mean is, is significant. And uh, working with Joe when we first started and talking about the Santa Monica Conservancy, uh, I know sometimes we, become under, we come under attack. And they say, why are you in the inner city? Why aren't you in the mountains? And folks don't understand that 
the foothills of Santa Monica begin in the Northeast. And that the pressures that we feel in our city can only be relieved by allowing for open space. And the untold relief, the, the sense of pressure, unless you live there, unless you are one family member where you have three to four individuals, three families living in a one bedroom apartment where they cannot go out to play because of the fear of shootings and the kind of pressures they feel. If you can step out onto those open spaces, if you can see those views, that sense of relief, what it feels to the soul, is something that is hard to put into words. And for that, I thank you, because without your efforts, those types of sensations and that sense of relief could never be felt by thousands and thousands of children and their families. So on their behalf, I'll say thank you all for everything you've done. It's well deserved. And I would hope that the private sector would understand that if they can join with you, we could leverage our resources and create a greater good. Perhaps we wouldn't have so many young people in our prisons. It'd make a huge difference. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Mr. Labange. Congratulations to those awardees and being recognized. It's a faith-based organization in the great constitution of the United States demands separation of church and state, but not church, temple, or mosque and community. And the involvement in the community and uh, in the Jewish community, very involved throughout uh, in many areas of the environment, which is so important. But I think it also leads a way for those in the city to find nature, which is so important. And I just wanted to salute each and every one of you and remind Mr. Edmonds of the big task ahead for Coinga Peak, that beautiful mountain next to Mount Lee in Griffith Park. Because Mr. Garcetti will tell you left of the H in the Hollywood sign, it's all held by some guys from Chicago. <laughs> and we want to make sure the public has it forever and ever. But I want to congratulate the honorees for their work and, and the fact that we involve and engage in this effort. Because it is about the environment and the work that is uh, being done. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Labange, Mr. Garcetti, and so Mr. I'd like Rule. to turn it over now to, to Lee Wallach, our, our president of COGEL, um, to say a few words, and then we'll present the awards. Um, just so you know, and I'll pass this on to Wendy, I want to make sure she has a chance, uh, Councilman Gruel, to, to note that uh, there's, it's actually a trading card kind of situation here. We're, we're making sure that... Uh, I too have mine. Uh, 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 <laughs> Councilman Gruel and the mayor have their own, uh, uh, their own brochure as well. I, I'll just tell you all, uh, this is an incredible partnership, and we don't do it alone. We do it with all of you. Um, whether it is Councilman Rosendahl's staff, Councilman Cardenas' staff, Councilman Park's staff, all of you, it is a partnership, and it's a partnership with these organizations that stand with me. Uh, we, we honor them because of the work they're doing and the fact that they're taking the moral high ground. And it is just such a, uh, you know, a, an honor, not only an honor to be here with them, but an honor to work with them. Look in your bags, use these bags, we mentioned this, but we want you to use these instead of the plastic bags you pick up at uh, your local market. Use them for your shopping over and over. You, it, you know, we, we want to make sure that you have protection and that you're practicing safe shopping. Um, of course, we threw in there, and it's appropriate that uh, Deaton walked into the room. We want to make sure that our own LADWP uh, is out there and that we're making sure that you're putting this in your home. Go and trade out these bulbs. Uh, and last but not least, of course, you do have, uh, and we are, we are going to make you work for all this in case somebody thinks that we're giving free gifts around here. Uh, we're going to make you do your work uh, and, and watch this CD as well and show it to everybody you know who has not seen it yet. Thank you. All right. So thank you very much, Lee. And um, I will start uh, with our Environmentalist of the Year of Award for Joe Edmiston, who is a friend of so many people around this horseshoe, who's here with his wife, uh, Pepper. Um, he is the director of the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy. Um, he's a product of Southern California and began his long conservationist career with the Sierra Club. In 1977, he was appointed by Governor Jerry Brown uh, to be the executive director of the Santa Monica Mountains Comprehensive Planning Commission with a clear and concise mission straight from the governor, quote, go down there and save the Santa Monica Mountains. And since that time, he has done precisely that. And he and the Conservancy have worked to preserve over 55,000 acres in the mountains. 
And this green buffer that now encircles Los Angeles will be here for generations to come, um, a place where Los Angelinos will be able to reconnect with nature, learn about everything from wildflowers to wild animals. And if that weren't enough, you sometimes see Joe in his ranger outfit, a sworn park ranger patrolling the mountains. So on behalf of all of the citizens of Los Angeles, all the residents in this city council, um, Kojol, myself, and Wendy Gruel, we want to thank you, Joe, for your concern, for your advocacy, and your dedication to preserving green space in Southern California. Thank you. Um, Madam President, members, it is entirely fitting to have a faith-based presentation in these chambers. I can't tell you how many times I have prayed for the outcome of various votes around this horseshoe. But in all seriousness, if the Conservancy has been able to do anything in the last 30 or so years, it is directly responsible because of the work of many of you without the support of the City of Los Angeles, without your support, without the Mayor's support, none of what we have done would be possible. And so on behalf of those generations who will be coming here, and hopefully they won't have to pray for a good environmental outcome. I haven't had to do that for a little while here. Uh, we know that you're behind us, and I really appreciate and thank you. And I want to acknowledge uh, my best consigliere uh, and also my sternest critic, and she keeps me on the straight and narrow, my wife, Pepper. Thank you. Congratulations, Joe. Um, this year's award recipients for Environmental Educators of the Year goes to the producers and director of the critically acclaimed film, An Inconvenient Truth. Now, let me have a Tom LeBond's moment here. How many people in this room have seen An Inconvenient Truth? Seen the movie? Okay, if your hand's not up, we've passed these out today to the council members. If anybody in the audience wants to watch it, go to see your council member. You can, we'll loan this out to you. It's, the most significant issue of our time, I think we are not understating to say, is global warming. And unlike other moments in history, when we landed on the moon, when Kennedy was shot, when um, the, the um, uh, hostages were released in Iran, it's difficult to find a point in time where we realized that this was the issue of the day. For me, I think it's going to be the moment when I saw an inconvenient truth. Many of us had worked on this for a long time, but if you look at the power there is no one vehicle for raising awareness that has done more to bring this country's attention to what is happening in our world than this movie. And we are really, really honored to have Lawrence Bender, um, the producer who has accomplished so much in other movies and in other uh, expressions of, of art before, but who might believe with me that this is probably going to be the most impactful um, piece of film that he ever works on in terms of what it does to change the world and what we can do to try to realize through each of our actions and the actions of governments, whether it's at the local or national level, what we can do to reverse global warming and sustain. Um, he worked closely with Vice President Gore, the director Davis Guggenheim, and his fellow producer Lori David, um, also Scott Burns and Leslie Chilcott, des delivered a stark message on the dire consequences of greenhouse gas emission and the unthinkable ramifications of continuing to allow this problem to fester unabated. Um, this DVD also has some commentary from Lawrence, so you want to see that. But this movie has become a rallying cry. Um, for all of us in terms of what we need to do. So here to award, um, sorry, to accept the award on behalf of the entire cast and crew is Lawrence Bender. Um, he has had numerous Academy Award nominated films including Good Will Hunting, Pulp Fiction, and Anna and the King. His prolific efforts as a producer are matched only by his passion as a social and political activist. He's advocated for peace in the Middle East by traveling to and visiting with the leaders of Israel, Palestine, and Egypt. He co-founded the Detroit Project, which many of us know here, an effort to raise awareness about the damaging consequences of SUV ownership to the environment and beyond. And I know Mr. Zine uh, watches that every time he gets into his SUV. Um, from all of us here at the city and to you and to all of you who worked on uh, An Inconvenient Truth, we thank you, congratulate you, and let, it re let this award help us redouble our efforts to join you in changing the world for the better. Congratulations, Lawrence. Thank you very much, Eric. That was wonderful. Um, thank you, Wendy. Lee Wallach. Um, uh, on behalf of my uh, fellow producers and uh, direct Davis Guggenheim, I want to thank you for this wonderful acknowledgement. Um,
we all had the real privilege to work with the Vice President. Uh, he truly is a great man, and we, uh, we were very privileged to work with him. Global warming is the greatest threat facing us in our lifetime. Um, and with your help, hopefully we can get this under control. Um, I think, I, I agree, I think that if, if we get it under control, that the Vice President Al Gore will be seen as one of the key figures that help us realize that this is such a great issue. Um, it is probably in the lifetime of our, in the history of our country, uh, it probably hasn't been a generation that has given uh, a problem to their children that can't be solved. And we might be that generation. And I know no one in this room wants that to be the case. Um, that's the reason why we made the movie. And, um, and I know that the city council here has done a lot, and I encourage you to do more. And yourself and the mayor obviously is taking great leadership in this area. And as we all know, global warming uh, has, to solve global warming, there's so many great things that we can do to help ourselves, whether it's our health care system, our economy, jobs, national security. So I, I really appreciate this very much and uh, continue the good work. Thank you. And finally, today, colleagues, we're here to honor Kojal's <clears throat> Environmental uh, Business of the Year Award. This year's recipient has worked to reduce greenhouse gases by improving energy efficiency within their company and influencing the day-to-day -day behavior of their employees to reduce the environmental impact of in internal operations. Hewlett Packard has been a model of environmental efficiency, integrating long-term economic, environmental, and social values in their everyday business practices at HP. They've walked, uh, walked the walk when it comes to corporate responsibility and their educational energy efficient programs will create environmental benefits that are felt far outside the workplace. Here to accept the award on behalf of HP is Ron Stone, Director of Government uh, Relations for Hewlett Packard. Let's thank them for their leadership. Uh, at the event the other night, they actually also gave away some, uh, for those of you that were not there in the raffle, gave away uh, a few computers and printers. Um, and I know that that is just one of many things they do, which is to, to give to nonprofit organizations and support our environment. Let's uh, recognize Ron Stone and Hewlett Packard. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Gruel, Councilman Garcetti, and all members of the City Council. I'm honored to accept this on behalf of Hewlett Packard. Uh, they, uh, the company is very thrilled to be chosen as the Business Environmentalist of the Year by Kojal. Uh, appreciate all the kind uh, comments you said about the company and its commitment to the environment. I'll just leave you with the idea that HP uh, looks at this, uh, looks at environmental protection on a life cycle. Um, a life cycle approach, be it from the beginning of life for a product where environmental stewards attack each product, each product and look at how it can be designed environmentally friendly, or at the end of life where products can be recycled and kept out of landfills. HP is proud that to date, since 1987, about 900 million tons of electronic products has been recycled, kept out of landfill. We are well on our way to our goal of one billion pounds being recycled by 2007. So thank you. Once again, thank you very much. HP is honored to uh, be the recipient of this award. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Madam Clerk. What is our next item? No, oh, Mr. Huizar, I'm sorry. Mr. Huizar is next. Hey, Jose. How are you? Well, good morning, colleagues and public. It's a real pleasure to be here today to bring to these chambers the pride of Ball Heights the Wolfpack football team. First, I want to thank them for sitting through out this whole morning very patiently. Young boys who uh, are taught 
to be great players on the field, but also are taught respect, are taught how to be team players, and most importantly, they are asked to do well in school and we check the report cards. Is that right, Nisam? Yes, we we check the report cards and they, do, they all do very, very well in school. I'm honoring them today here because they have made it to the San Gabriel Valley Junior All-American Football Conference Finals for their first time in 19 years. And they did a great job throughout the year. They are Bo Heights pride and we are very, very proud of them. The Wolfpack is a wonderful example of a successful pro program that is run and directed by parent volunteers. These parents make sure that their children are participating in sports after school, that they learn to be team players and get some exercise, and that they learn to be part of something greater and get involved in their local community. On behalf of the City of Los Angeles and the 14th Council District, I want to congratulate the Wolfpack, give them the certificate of appreciation, and thank them for keeping many of our young boys and girls, they also have cheerleaders, keeping many of our young boys and girls active, involved in the community, giving them a place to be safe after school, and also showing them that we're all very, very proud to be from Borough Heights. Let me present this to Alberto Ceja, the head coach, and to Nisam Leon, the founder of, Bo of the Wolfpack. Congratulations and thank you very much. Mr. Reyes. Yes, I just, I just want to take a moment to thank the parents. Uh, thank the parents for their demonstration of support and kindness. More importantly, the love you're sharing with our sons, our daughters, in these trying times when our schools are so congested, there's not even a place for them to sit, at a time in which many of them get discouraged about learning, you're providing an alternative. And it really is exactly set as parents to make a huge difference. And to the young men and women, please recognize the sacrifices of your parents. I know they work hard, many of them carry two jobs. Uh, they are essentially trying their best to provide for you. The fact that you are winners, and the fact that you can learn from that example will carry you through high school, through college, <coughs> yes indeed, graduate school, and hopefully one of you will be sitting in this circle working with others for their future. So thank you, Council Wissar, for what you're doing and the great message you're giving to everyone. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Thank you, Mr. Thank Reyes. You, Mr. At this time, I'd like to present uh, Alberto Ceja, the head coach of the Wolfpack, to say a few words. Alberto? Yeah, coach. Uh, wow, uh, what an honor. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody uh, to make this possible. Uh, thank Jose Wizar and all his staff for all the support you give to our uh, beautiful community of Boyle Heights. Uh, anything we ask from them, they, uh, they give us. And uh, I want to thank these kids for uh, making this uh, dream possible. You know, uh, we had a tremendous season this year. You know, the first team in Bow Heights history to, to win a playoff game, first team to uh, make it to the championship. And uh, even though we came short, you know, we didn't win the championship, um, they're winners already because uh, they were able to bring a community together. And it was real beautiful to see the stands filled with people from Boyle Heights coming back, uh, people that played back in uh, 88. I played for the first team in 1988. You know, we practiced at Evergreen Park. And um, guys, I want to thank you guys. I want to let you guys know that I love every single one of you guys and I'm excited for you guys. You know, these guys are going to be uh, someday teachers, lawyers, uh, maybe principals or like uh, council the young members. man said, councilman. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's real exciting, you know, I'm real excited for you guys and uh, I want to let you guys know that I love every single one of you guys and I want to thank you guys for uh, letting me coach you guys this year. So thank you very much to everybody and uh, Boyle Heights Wolfpack. Now we're going to hear from one of the players, Juan Garcia. Juan? Yeah, Well, hi. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of unex unexplainable that um, we made it to the playoffs, bringing a whole community together um, to bring our, our hearts and our Wolfpack pride. And well, I thank the coaches for teaching, teaching us how to play good and our AD always being there. Well, uh, it's just an honor. Thank you. All right, Juan, well done, Juan. 
Excellent job, Juan. And lastly, I'd like to far, uh, invite the founder of the Wolfpack, Nisam, Leon, who I've known uh, since our days at Hollenbeck Middle School and someone who has a lot of heart for Ball Heights and a lot of heart for these kids, Nisam. Um, it is a great honor to be here today. Um, when you've done something for 19 years, and when I started the organization, I was 19 years old, and I knew I wanted to do something in our community. And uh, we started off with 40 kids over at Evergreen Park. Beto was on my first team, and I actually was his coach back then in 1988. And um, our president, who could not be here today, he's a uh, math analysis and calculus teacher over at Roosevelt High School. He also came through the program and now is also a basketball coach at Roosevelt. So what we've been really blessed with is we had kids buy into the system and then come back. And that's why our organization has been able to blossom, has been able to grow, and you meet a lot of good people along the way. Uh, forgive me, especially in a place like City Hall, that I'm a little oblivious to politics, but when I came in today, I saw a picture of Herb Wesson, who I did not know was a councilman, and uh, he was the president at Culver City Youth Football many years ago when uh, we didn't have money to buy a scale. So Herb would lend us his, and his wife Fabian was really good to us also, and they would give us hand-me-down jerseys year in and year out. And uh, I also uh, had a great experience working with Mr. Holden because we used to be in the King Football Conference. There was a lot of teams from his neighborhood, and he always helped us. And uh, there was a gentleman who passed away who used to be at Baldwin Hills Youth Football who uh, Mr. Parks knew very well, a gentleman by the name of James Ford, who was immensely helpful to Boyle Heights Youth Football. Um, we've seen Boyle Heights Youth Football take a, a, a major transformation over the last 19 years, from 40 boys to 270 boys and girls. And uh, our program is one that keeps a lot of kids off the streets. We are the only program in Boyle Heights that's a sports program that the children must maintain a 2.0 GPA in order to participate. We're pretty fortunate that we're at Roosevelt High School and that Ms. Quemada has been gracious enough, enough to lend us places like her classrooms so we can do tutoring and we're able to get teachers involved and, and people involved to help us out. Um, we are probably the most fortunate group of adults for the simple fact that we get to work with these great young people. And uh, I was very fortunate growing up that I had great people involved in my life. I know Jose Weizar had a lot of great people. He's a childhood friend, so we know a lot of the same people. And uh, Mr. Reyes, let me let you know that Ron Santos and his group, Ron Chico, excuse me, and his group over at Lincoln are doing great work. You should be very proud of them. They're doing great work also. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, like I said, we've come from only having two teams and makeshift uniforms and not owning a scale to being able to keep 270 kids off the streets. A lot of it has to do with the help that we've gotten from our city council. Like I said, I think we're fortunate in the sense that I actually, the city councilman is my friend. I grew up with him. And he understands the needs of Boyle Heights better than most. Why? Because he's a product of Boyle Heights. So in a, in a day like today, um, we have a lot of civic pride. Mayor Villarragosa is from Boyle Heights. Jose Huizar is from Boyle Heights. And this is the Boyle Heights Wolf Pack. We thank you very much. Thank you very much, and uh, I also wanted to note that we have 11 scholar athletes that have a 3.3 or better GPA. That's a huge achievement. Oh, yeah, Finally, baby. I want to mention that Ball Heights, we have a lot of pride from, in Ball Heights. We also have a lot of challenges, and this program is a difference for many of these kids, whether being on the streets, being recruited by gangs, or being on a football program that's teaching you good values and enforcing the need to not only learn on the field, but in the classroom. Great program. This is a grassroots program that I want to thank everyone who's been involved in this. We need more of this, and I appreciate all you're doing for our community. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, that finishes our presentations for uh, today. Unless there's anybody, any other council members with any other presentations, just want to double check. If not, uh, Madam Clerk, let's uh, please run through the agenda. First order of business is approval of the minutes. Uh, Ms. Gruel moves and Ms. Hahn seconds. If there's no objection, those will be approved. Next order. Commendatory resolutions for approval. 
And Mr. Parks moves and Mr. Rosendahl seconds. If there's no objection, those will be approved as well. First items on the agenda, Mr. President, are items noticed for public hearing. Item number one, I believe there is a card on that item. Okay, let's call that special for card from public. Item number two, there is a request from uh, Bureau of Street Lighting to continue that matter to January 16th. Is there any objection, folks, to continuing that to the 16th of January, item two? If not, that will be approved. Next items. Next items are items three through seven, and those are street lighting district ordinances. Okay. We'll open and close the public hearings on those. Any members wishing to call them special? Seeing none, let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those are approved. Next uh, items. The, the ordinances oh, sorry, they will over. carry over because we have, uh, and those will carry over till after the vacation? Right, to okay. uh, January 9th. Okay, those will carry over to January 9th. Um, next items, please. Next item is item number eight, and uh, it's noticed on the agenda as an item for which public hearing has been held. However, committee has waived it, and the CAO uh, report has been distributed to the council members, and if the council member wishes, they can adopt those recommendations. Okay. Well, let's open and close public hearing on that, and uh, I will move the, that uh, um, HCD. No, sorry, there's no HCD report, but I'll move the motion, um, and Ms. Gruel will second. Let's open the roll on eight. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Next items. Next items are items for which public hearings have not been held. Items 9 through 11, 10 votes are required for consideration, and I believe there are cards on 10, 11, and 10 and 11. Okay, let's call those special. Number 9 will open and close the public hearing. Anybody wishing to be heard on 9 from the council? Seeing none, let's open the roll on item 9. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. 9 is approved. Next item, please. Next item on the continued agenda is item number 12, and that is also an item for which public hearing has not been held, and I okay. believe there's a card on that also. There is, so let's go ahead and call that special. And okay. Mr. President, do you wish to recess the regular meeting and go into the special meeting? Yes, please. Cardinus, Skrull, Hahn, Wiesar, Labange, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosendell, Smith, Weiss, West, and Zion Garcetti, 11 members present. Okay. First order. Uh, the, there is one item on the agenda, it's item 13, and uh, that is an item for which public hearing has not been held, there are track maps. Okay, I see no cards on that, we'll open and close the public hearing. Anybody wishing to call 13 special? If not, let's go ahead and open the roll, close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. And that concludes the special meeting. Okay, we'll go into pu general public comment at this time. I'd like to invite uh, first forward um, Sylvia Lynn Hawkins to address the council. Ms. Hawkins, you have two minutes. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ms. Hawkins. Uh, Cogentin medication is not the answer. As we continue to search for the cure or answer to uh, autistic uh, aneurysm, blood clots in the brain that less than six months later can also cause a stroke, the answer is Cogentin is causing the dysfunction of slur, of speaking problems, too slow. Down the brain's wave vows of looking and seeing clearly. As we continue to be aware of food shortage, which may have cogentin inside of certain foods and restaurants, the amount of foods to keep our brains anorexic, our brain tumors, we must be aware of meats and food eating inside of homes only at this time. No on 1,800 Mr. calories. Mr. President, I'm not sure if United this is States. within the subject matter of the city of Los Angeles. Okay. We just remind you, as long as it's under uh, our jurisdiction, okay. please continue. Okay, concerning the 1,800 calorie, uh, we must uh, be also aware of uh, president um, uh, that are dying all over the world. And, Prime Ministers, would not call their name because that might be off the agenda, uh, of them, again, are stealing from Florida and all over the United States of America and not paying the United States of America bill. They both are working together to really break you as a food and meat department. The 1800 country is not enough food for any of any restaurant that is charging $20 a plate. We will be bombing again country soon. We are asking all people in this United States of America to please stop stealing and living 
Thank you so much, Ms. Hawkins, for your thoughts on that subject. Uh, we are now going to go to Van Nuys City Hall. Thank you. I'm sorry, your time's up. Thank you. Um, we have to go out to the Valley for Zuma Dog now. I'm sorry, but thank you. Okay, Mr. Dog. Yes, thank you so much. Once again, Zuma Dog in his private council chambers. I feel so safe. Officer Landry can't physically abuse me with handcuffs, y'all. But also, I'd like to say the petition is in. Petition to nomination. Zuma Dog for City Council in District 7, y'all. Check the LA City TV, the LACity.org website under the City Clerk Elections. You can see Zuma Dog for District Number 7. Now, I'd like to say there was a report on a political blog. It's talking about Eric Garcetti. I heard you complain in the meeting that Zuma Dog and people show up every day over and over well there's a reason y'all because shadiness and things you're supposed to be doing continue to not be done day after day but here's a good some good news I'd like to say the reason Zuma Dog comes day after day is finally paying off because there was a, a 40 page report from the planning committee uh, the pl LA planning department that had to be fast tracked and the neighborhood councils were upset they didn't have a chance to look at it long enough but the reason it was fast tracked is because regarding the condo conversion ordinance there's been laws in the book for 1981 and they've been ignored y'all so you had to fast track it so now it said here let me read let me read from the political blog here it said that that herb wessons uh, dodged the original pre-discovery condo conversion motion by refusing to calendar it and until some local activists showed up at city hall now they're paying attention to it those local activists is zoom and dog and thank you noah weiss we showed up at committee meetings eric our city wants to criticize me for showing up too much that's because your shadiness and corruption happens too much. I got to show up every day because every day you're not doing things you're supposed to. And Zuma Dog's here to remind you. So I'd like to congratulate the L.A. Planning Division for the 40-page report that reminds City Council that regarding the condo conversions, there's laws in effect. They've been ignored. So Zuma Dog's been showing up since October talking about it. And now it's finally being something done about. Meanwhile, come, thank you very much for listening. And it shows you can do something from this podium, but you have to show up every day, y'all. And that's the point. Thank you so very much. Much, Mr. Dog, and uh, just to establish the record, uh, I certainly never have complained that you showed up too much. Uh, I'm neutral on, on how people come, and if that was reported, I just want to establish for the record that that was incorrect. Our next speaker is Matt Dowd here. I think Mr. Mr. Dog's twin. What's with the wide angle? See, it's not till I open my, my mouth you can tell who it is. Give me a close up. Right, you thought it was Zuma Dog sitting at the back of the room, but he's out in Van Nuys. I want to say something, Mr. City Attorney. Pursuant to council rules, I want to make a brief political announcement. Lava Lounge, Sunday night. If you're watching this Sunday afternoon on TV, get up to the Zuma Dog party sir, at Lava sorry, Lounge. He's a political asset. I know, but sir, if you can just address things that are under our jurisdiction, that's not. Go ahead. Furthermore, uh, I'm putting you on uh, two years' notice. I'm going to run 2009. I'm giving you two years. I want Mr. Uh, Cardenas and Ms. Gruel to take notice of this, only because it's going to be Cardenas, Dog, Dowd, Gruel. So we'll be all sitting together over there, and Hunt will fit in between Huizar and Labange. Also, um, I want to give uh, big ups to the LA Times, of course. See, just look at the LA Times. That's what you've got to deal with. I'm putting you on two-year notice for the homeless. Skid Row, nothing looks like it's happening. I'm on my way down to the Argonaut, 11th District, Bill Rosendahl's district. They want to see a copy of the preliminary injunction. I'm on my way straight over there to see my mate Vince. And further pursuant to council rules, um, Mr. City Attorney, I want to express my disgust at the performance of certain council members. Mr. Zine, man, at Rules and Elections Committee single-handedly trying to put people out for a month because he doesn't like their public comment. And Mr. Garcetti for Thank not you, reopening sir. public comment. Candido Morris is our next speaker. Good morning, Mr. President, Council Members. Uh, first of all, myself and the Knights of Columbus would like to say to a good friend of ours, uh, Councilman uh, Alex Padilla, we, uh, our prayers are with you, and uh, 
they will be with you until you recover and uh, he's a good friend of ours and we um, we want him to know that we're praying for him and so. we i spoke to mr padilla yesterday and a number of us have and he's doing great so thank Wonderful. you for that Appreciate good it. to hear uh the other thing that i'd like to discuss is you know mr president i've been here since 1991 and i'm not here to borrow a word from the uh the mayor i'm not here to kiss up to you or to or to anybody here i'm here because i'm an activist i want to be part of a solution to the city uh and on wednesday i made a statement and uh, i was incorrectly quoted i was not complaining what i was saying is it was a disappointment to see that people that had the qualifications to run were not running because they felt somebody else had more name recognition and more money and that's the wrong thing to do just because somebody has more money and more recognition you've got to do it because you feel it in your heart you need to know that people need to know what you stand for and so mr president council members i know a lot of times we don't like what we hear uh, what we hear here but it's a very important that with that first amendment right that we be allowed to speak and i appreciate that uh, mr president council members thank you very much mr Morris. that closes our general public comment if we can return to the items called special please First item called special, Mr. President, is item number one, and that was called special for cards in the public. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dog out in Van Nuys. Item number one. Oh, no, number one. Let's see. Catch me by surprise, y'all. I was doing some other business here in my private chambers. Let me see what the next item up for bid on the city council's price is right, y'all. The fun new game show. Budget and Finance Committee report and ordinance relative to increase. Oh, this is so silly. But I wanted people to know there's a lot of pet activists out there. This is going to be raising the fee, the adoption. Why are you raising adoption fees for rats, mice, squirrels, hamsters, gerbils, guinea pigs, and similar rodents? They're raising the adoption fee for a dollar to five dollars. That's going to be bad for animals, y'all, because then they're not going to be able to get adopted because it's going to cost more money, y'all. And so then we're going to have a lot more animals that are being dead. Hold on. Can, can you hold on one second? My time. Keep the time running. My cell phone's ringing. Hold on. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dog. That closes your public comment on this one. Then Matt Dowd will be our next speaker here. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was hoping uh, Councilman Herb Weston would be here today because I want to hear that they're raising the rates for these uh, pocket pets because people are eating these as well. That was the justification for the uh, rabbit adoption fee. People were buying them and eating them. So I don't know what these guinea pigs and rodents taste like but yeah dollar sounds too cheap to me the main thing I, I really want to comment on and uh, you know the reason I'm commenting is because we are the future of the City Council it might take us a couple of years to get there sir if you could please talk um, about the pocket pets oh Thank you. come on mr. president that's fair and you square. know the rules and we've been very clear with them mr. Dowd we just ask that you adhere to them and we can share all of your ideas with us on each topic but please stick to the uh, agenda item that's before us. thanks Thank you. for the correction sir I'll apologize I'll try and keep it in check um, what I did notice though is it says these have been updated to reflect the council's recent action to increase rabbit adoption fees and no further council action is necessary but my somehow photographic memory remembers that there was meant to be a report back to council on the effect of the rabbit adoption fee increase on adoptions so i think council action is necessary i only come in here to point it out i'm trying to take time off but as uh, mr dog keeps pointing out there's uh shadiness corruption abuse fraud and waste and uh, I have to come here and uh, also keep an eye on these little things. And you know what, I might, even, uh, I might even adopt a couple of these pocket pets myself. Are you allowed to bring them to City Hall, Mr. President? What's the rule on pocket pets at City Hall? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that closes our public comment on item number one. Anybody wishing to speak on this item? Please open the roll on the item. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Uh, Next item, please. And the ordinance goes over for. Uh, I'm sorry, that's January correct. There's an ordinance till January 9th. We will have the second reading then. And uh, if we can go to the next item, please. Next item is item number 10, and that was also called special for cards from the public. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dog? Yes, Mr. Garcetti. Item First number of 10. All, I did have 
Uh, Eric, first of all, I did have a card in on number 11. Oh, you did have 11. Um, we're, I'd like we're to on say, 10 please, right now. we'll get to 11 right, after no, that. Go ahead. By the way, for the city, for the city clerk, this is very important. Please check the transcript because when you called the, the roll call on the quorum, she mentioned Padilla, and I know he's not there today, and he's no longer on LA City Council. But if you check the tape, I did hear the word Padilla read as the quorum. So I hope you have a valid quorum going on right now. Meanwhile, number 10, communication from the chair regarding the smart meter program. Okay, there's a meter program. I got some problems with the parking meters. First of all, you need to fix the parking meters because I left my paper clip in my pocket. But I just wanted to demonstrate if you're in any of these parking meters downtown, you just take the paper clip, you put it in and swoop it up. You stick it in the slot and all you have to do is swoop it up and then you can rig it to get all the free time. So first of all, you know, that's important. Get the money. Secondly, you need the summary and evaluation from the responses in connection with parking meter technologies. Uh, if you go down to Santa Monica, the Third Street Promenade, they have a wonderful parking meter uh, system. It's, un it's unique. It's unlike anything I've seen before. It's cost efficient. It's innovative. And maybe you should look into that. Go down to the city of uh, Santa Monica, a great place, the Third Street Promenade, and look into their parking meter technology on the street. I think that'd be quite helpful. And um, there were a lot of broken meters, man. When I was downtown yesterday, finally, my nominating petition for Zoom and Darfur City Council, Sir, I saw that there was point. a lot of garbage. Garbage. Sir, Excuse if you me? keep please to the parking meters. I am. I'm to the parking meters. When I was coming downtown yesterday to, to City Hall, there's parking meters in front of City Hall when I was nominating myself for City Council. A lot of parking meters were broken, just rows of them with little, like, save-on baggies on top. And so that's a lot of lost revenue, too. So thank you, and I'll yield the rest of my time. That's 25 seconds. And I hope we got good parking meters in front of Lava Lounge on Sunday. There's going to be a lot of people, and we got to get all those parking meters working so we can get as much revenue. Oh, they don't do parking meters on Sunday at 830 at Lava Lounge. That's okay anyway. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, finished Mr. Dog. Mr. Dowd is next here on item number 10 still. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Sound Guy, can we get a little bit of volume in the chambers? I don't know if anyone can hear me at the back. This will be my last item for the week. Thank you, uh, 11th District, for the applause. Uh, it's been a long time coming. But I wanted to talk to this one. I, I've tried to contact uh, Wendy Gruel over the parking revenue, the whole business of collecting these revenue, because I've found anomalies in the system, illegalities, really, they could be challenged in court just in the paperwork that's being sent out. I have copies of them. I've tried to contact Mr. Labonge over this one too, and his advice was just to pay the parking and uh, he would investigate it. But really, I want to stay on the topic of the parking meters, um, the smart parking. It's a great idea. Um, the request for proposals, um, I want that to be an open process. We want it to be fair, equal. We don't want any backroom deals to give contracts for these smart parking meters to any company who's uh, quietly donating at a councilman's behest to any other kind of charitable organization or however else they're trying to get around these things. I'm on my way to the Argonauts, so I don't have too much time. I hope those parking meters are in place up at the Lava Lounge because there's going to be a lot of so, revenue okay, collected. Thank you very much. It's just a second warning. Thank you. You too. Our next, uh, oh, sorry, that closes public comment for number 10. Anybody wishing to be heard on item number 10 from the council? Seeing none, let's open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. If we can take up items 11 and 12 now together. Uh, Mr. Dogg, if you wanted to address us on items 11 and 12, please. Okay, um, I'm going to try to stay on topic. We're talking about track maps. As you know, I'm very concerned about condo conversions and things like this. It all starts with the track map. Now, I know that there's some ICO, interim control ordinances, that have been put in around town, and that's supposed to, you know, not allow any track maps to be made because what happens here with these track maps, and uh, there's A, B, C, D, E, and F, what that is is that that provides the blueprint foundation of which these condos get to be 
put through. You know, the track map's the first legal document or whatever. And so these track maps, I hope that there's one-third affordable housing involved in this track map because uh, that's being ignored in the city. Plus, I hope these track maps aren't for any new constructions of things in areas with a lower than 5% vacancy rate because there's not supposed to be any condo conversions in this town unless there's a more than 5% vacancy rate. But the highest vacancy rate's about 3% in this town. So you have a lot of condos when there's not supposed to be, and it all starts with the track map. And so these track maps, I say you got to put them on hold because first we need to find out what the true vacancy rate in this town is. We need... we. You know, you're not in for. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't been listening to the law for since 1981. You've been ignoring it and turning a blind, deaf ear and eye, y'all. You're deaf, dumb, and blind, y'all. That's the problem. So you complain when Zuma Dog comes every day to talk about this stuff, but you're not supposed to. I want to see city council say we can't approve these track maps because there's ICOs all over town and we're not supposed to be making new ones and we don't even know what the vacancy rate in the town is and we're making condo construction conversions all over the place when we don't got the vacant when, when we're not supposed to be doing it and you, I want to you put an ordinance up there for a vacancy rate check okay you can call it the Zuma dog item I'm begging you before you do this you must say no to any new track maps until you do a thing that knows the vacancy rate so get the vacancy rate straight y'all Zuma for, dog for city council for the, city for the record the approval of track map is a ministerial act by the council and it also just as for our viewers at home um, most if not many of them are not for condo conversions um, I don't know in this particular case, but obviously that's something that's been here, but they are for any for sale homes. Okay. If we can please open the roll on 11 and 12. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Thank you. Those are approved. Next order of business, please. Council has motions for posting and referral. Those are posted and referred. There's an excuse on the desk. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused Wednesday, December 20th uh, for city business. A motion is required. All right. Um, I will move that. Ms. Perry will second. Ms. Hahn is excused. And that clears the desk, Mr. President. And colleagues, just a reminder, now that we are down to 14 members as well, we'll be sending out a letter, but we are going to uh, try to keep um, any of the city business excuses down to three members to keep a little bit of a cushion of at least 11 members to keep a quorum. So on some of the requests to be excused for city business, um, after the new year, we may be unable to grant that if it's more than uh, three members that are uh, absent for business. Um, next order of business, please. Uh, that cleared the desk, Mr. Okay. President. Any announcements, colleagues? Announcements? Mr. Parks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to inv uh, invite the community tomorrow in Lamert Park between 11 and 2 to be the annual, fourth annual 8th uh, District toy giveaway. We're going to have about uh, 30 tons of snow for the kids to play in, a variety of activities, and we just hope and pray that there's no rain. Thank you, Mr. Labange. Uh, again, Mr. President, thank you uh, and your help on this. And uh, a new traffic light was turned on in our Hollywood district along Highland Avenue. And uh, nice. So, I know you already heard it. I know you already heard it, Ms. Johnson. Okay, I won't frame you on that one. I know you're kidding. But uh, safety is so important to all of us in our rush period of holiday time to slow down and make sure we uh, watch out for each other. Thank you, Mr. LeBonge. Ms. Perry? Thank you, Mr. President. I made an adjourning motion yesterday in memory of Terry Kamek, and I have just an announcement about the funeral arrangements. Is that okay, okay to say Yeah, go, go ahead and do that. Yeah. Okay. Thursday, December the 21st at 11 a.m., Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa, located at 3800 South Fairview Road in Santa Ana, and internment will follow at Pacific View Memorial Park. 3500 Pacific View Drive in Corona Del Mar. Thank you. Thank you. And I know Mr. Uh, Labonge and I are very excited to welcome the Hollywood Police Division's annual holiday party uh, where Santa we expect to be uh, again in, uh, in full force. And that will be this Saturday at the uh, 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 Police Division Station or in the Municipal Building, excuse me, the Municipal Building there on Fountain at the Ho just adjacent to the Hollywood Police Division. Um, at 10 a.m. and we invite members of the community to come and to see Santa and there'll be a toy giveaway as well. Um, sorry, Mr. Labonge on that, uh, Mr. C Cardenas and then Mr. Labonge? No, no, separate. Note. Okay. And also uh, at the uh, Reindeer Romp all weekend long at the Los Angeles Zoo, wonderful time and they are importing snow uh, to join in the festivities right. to give it a real uh, holiday spirit. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Labonge. Mr. Cardenas. Thank you. Um, there's a, an article came out about a 
recent former colleague of ours, Alex Padilla, that he was hospitalized and he had an operation. Uh, there's some accuracy there. I was in touch with him on a day-to-day -day basis throughout the whole uh, uh, the progress of it, and uh, he is doing very well. I was with him yesterday having breakfast, sitting in front of him, and I was just pleased to see that his recovery is speedy, and according to the doctors, everything went uh, clockwork, even uh, textbook, excuse me, but even better than that. The operation was quicker than they thought. The results were exactly what they were looking for, and uh, he's uh, on his feet and doing very, very well. So. For those of you who uh, have him in your prayers, thank you very much. And on behalf of him and his family, uh, he appreciates all the support and calls and, and uh, emails and letters he's been receiving. Um, I was so pleased that, uh, to see him that I said, Alex, the fact that they operated on your brain must have been a small operation. And uh, he <laughs> laughed. Uh, look, the guy went to MIT. He can take a joke like that, right? You know. So he, he's doing wonderfully. He's, he's uh, <laughs> one of my best friends, and it was just wonderful to see him uh, just in, in full regular spirits, and uh, he's doing wonderfully. And once again, thank you all for your prayers. Thank you, Mr. Rosendahl. I just want to say, Mr. President, I spoke to Alex about 10 minutes ago, uh, and uh, I, I've been praying for him um, in my morning prayers, and he said, Bill, I'm okay now. He says, I'm up and running. I feel like 100%. But he said it was a humbling experience, obviously. And then, of course, my final comment to him was, all we have is the moment. And folks, that's all we have is the moment. So enjoy the moment. Uh, and and uh, bless, bless, bless Alex Padilla, our senator. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, everybody, for those good wishes. Any other announcements? Yes, Mr. Reyes. Yes, uh, Council President, I just want to share with my colleagues that uh, Councilman Greg Smith and I had the opportunity to participate with the Public Services Summit in Oslo, Norway, uh, Stockholm, Sweden, and participate in the ceremonies of, no of the Nobel Peace Prize. This year, Mohammed Yunus was a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, an individual who was able to participate in microloans with $27 lent out to women, bring them out of poverty in Bangladesh, in his perspective, he would wish that if we could all understand how communities can work together and support each other through such efforts where communities can support through microloans, where we can start from the bottom up, that perhaps poverty can be one of those experiences that we could see in the museum, a thing of the past. And it was such an inspiring experience. And I want to thank Greg Smith for joining us. Uh, we had a great uh, learning experience. Our ability to advance our communication through technology is something we need, to, we need to explore. In studying what's happening in other countries throughout the world, we are rather Neanderthal in our approach here in this city. So we need to advance our abilities. And I, again, just want to share that with you. Uh, the Public Services Summit is, is, is an experience I recommend to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for representing us, Mr. Reyes, uh, very proudly there. Thank you for those words. Any other announcements, colleagues? Can I please ask that we rise for adjourning motions? Colleagues at journey motions? Mr. Zine? President, uh, Mayor Michael A. Guido passed away December 5th. First elected as mayor of Dearborn, Michigan in 1986 when the city's youngest council members became the youngest mayor. He was most recently elected to his sixth term in 2005. He was serving as president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors past member of the National League of Cities Board of Directors, and in the aftermath of September 11th, was asked to chair the National League of Cities Working Group on Homeland Security. In March of this year, one month after being diagnosed with cancer, the mayor visited Los Angeles to participate in the U.S. Conference of Mayors Summit on Gang Violence with our mayor, Antonio Villaraigosa. He took time during that trip to meet with the Los Angeles Beirut Sister City Steering Committee to offer advice and encouragement. Dearborn is a city with a significant Middle Eastern population. He successfully established the first U.S.-Lebanon sister city relationship as Dearborn was united. As mayor, he was known for his dedication to improving the quality of life for all residents of the city. His administration focused on parks, recreation facilities, libraries, and economic development projects in downtown and both the east and west ends of the city. 
the crown jewel of his effort was the 2001 opening of Ford Community and Performing Arts Center, which is the largest of its kind in North America. He's a man known to have a self a depriving sense of humor and had the ability to make everyone feel comfortable in a city of various cultures and nationalities. One of his mottos was Dearborn Way, cut your grass, look after your neighbor, and have pride in your community. Survived by his wife Carrie and two sons, Michael Jr. and Anthony. I had the privilege to meet Mayor Guido when he was here in Los Angeles. Just a wonderful man. I did not know that he was suffering from cancer at the time, but he made an impact on many, many people. And may God, may he rest in peace. All, All members, members on thank that. You. Thank you. Mr. Rosendahl? Across America yesterday, I had the honor and privilege uh, of being a uh, veteran from the Vietnam era uh, to inaugurate in this great city the first of its kind here for 15 years across America. Uh, a generous firm in New England has been donating reefs. As we go through the holiday seasons, obviously we think of our loved ones. We must think of our veterans, those who have given their lives um, to our great nation. We in Los Angeles uh, did it for the first time yesterday. The Daughters of the American Revolution helped organize it. I had the privilege of emceeing it, and we will continue this tradition at the Veterans uh, Cemetery in West LA. For all those who have given their lives, and to all men and women today, as we're standing here in harm's way in Afghanistan and in Iraq, we send them a Christmas greeting and a Hanukkah greeting and a healthy and prosperous 2007. But reaps across America honoring the dead who have been there for us uh, uh, protecting our democracy. May they all rest in peace. Thank you very much. Mr. Lepond? I'd like uh, Mr. Parks to join with me on this. Uh, Lamar Hunt, who was the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, founding member of the American Football League, uh, visionary, uh, passed away of a battle with prostate cancer, survived by his wife, uh, two sons, and a daughter. And uh, what's interesting about Lamar Hunt, he was 27 years old when he first tried to get a National Football League franchise in Dallas, and the NFL put their own uh, team in there, and then he moved to Kansas City. Uh, but also, as the American Football Conference expanded, they really took cities in the West uh, that were not populated with uh, professional football teams at the time, such as Denver and Kansas City and uh, other cities that have changed over the years. And uh, it's a phenomenal story of uh, Lamar Hunt as we adjourn in his memory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, I ask also that we adjourn in memory um, of a dedicated community activist on behalf of Mr. Wesson. Uh, Mr. Milton Joseph Garrett passed away on December 12th. Um, he was born July 29th in 1936 and displayed exemplary citizenship and concern for the betterment of his community through his active involvement in the St. Eugene Catholic Church, um, the church's 50 plus club. He um, was much beloved um, in his community and much beloved in this city, survived by his wife Gloria, his daughter Ms. Yolanda Renee Green, his son Keith Garrett, grandchildren Cameron and Derek Garrett, Brandon and Bria Green, as well as a host of relatives and friends who will miss him dearly. So on behalf of Councilmember Herb Wesson Jr., uh, we ask, uh, or I ask that we adjourn today in his memory. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Have a great weekend. We will next be in session on the 19th, this coming Tuesday. We look forward to seeing you. That will be here in City Council. Have a wonderful weekend, and happy holiday shopping. <laughs>